The Chris Mahana Quantica holidays are here, and tonight we have our own special treat for you, the always enjoyable Listless. But the fun doesn't stop after the definitive list is complete. Join us for Listless the News along with your comments, calls, and emails right now on the show where every gamer has a voice. Orange Lounge Radio. Hello, my friends out there on the internet, and welcome back to another week of the show where every gamer has a voice. It is Orange Lounge Radio, live on this December the 21st, 2014, with the 580th episode of our program. We do tape live every Sunday night at the Voice of Geeks Network, vognetwork.com, 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern, immediately following the Bobby Blackwolf Show. And if you are listening live, you should join us in our chat room, live.vognetwork.com. Uh, and uh, yeah, we got lots of comments in our chat room, people talking about the holidays. Let's talk about the holidays before we talk about the games we've been playing here in studio with myself, Rob Roberts, and our co-host. Say hello over there to Dark Sakura or Jamie Summers. What? 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 And uh, hey, <laughs> happy Hanukkah to you, Miss Summers. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, how is the Festival of Lights treating you? Flammable. <laughs> Highly flammable. It's a season of miracles, yo. Uh, which, by the way, I got to say, it, it is it is a miracle, all this uh, fatty food that you've brought to the OLR <laughs> studios <laughs> tonight. It's amazing. I have brought uh, truffle mint m M&M, and not M&M's, um, Hershey Kisses. Mm-hmm. I have brought cookies that are chocolate cookies with candy cane kisses on them. Which come to us via... Becky, From Becky. Right? Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Becky. Listening. Thank and you. And then Becky has given us a pie... This is Mary Jumis or <laughs> December Ween. Love it. It's apple pie, and Becky's apple pies are the best apple pies in I the just, universe. Everyone eats some now. The fact that she actually baked us a pie, that's love right there. That is love. Becky Thank you, Becky. Is, Becky is the pie master. Becky's the best. So Her pie knows no equal. And then later on, you are going to get it all Jewish up in here. And McLatkes. McLatkes. With applesauce. I'm excited. Because it's also food miss. I, you know what? This time of year, I celebrate everything because there's great food with every what holiday. What did you get for the holidays? Food. Fat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, also say hello in studio to Techmaster Loki. Hello. Hi, Loki. How are you? Doing all right. All right. We were uh, reminiscing a little bit before the show. Uh, this week was Stephen Colbert's last show it on was, Comedy Central. It, it was a little bit sad. It yes. was a little bit sad. I didn't watch it because I don't cable, but I did you know, watch the YouTube of the, was it the last 10 minutes of the show. Of course. And it's like, oh, man, that's... <laughs> it, it, it was... It's, it, it was well done. Let me put it that way. It, it's, it's, it's disappointing to see him going off the air, but it's... He'll move on to uh, better yeah. things. and It's only for six months because he's going to be in a slot where he'll get exposed to even more people uh, taking over for David Letterman. So, And a lot of people, I think, are concerned because you know he hosted the Colbert Report as a persona, and um, uh, he's going to be hosting the Late Show as himself. He... But I, I, it's like seriously, have if, you seen? Like, yeah, if you followed else? him for a long time, like even on the Daily Show, and and my favorite TV show of all time ever was one that he co-created called Strangers with Which Candy. Which I don't understand how that only ran for a few seasons because it, it was just it, it was brilliant. really brilliant. And yeah, I don't know why it got canceled in favor of Strip Mall, which. You know, I love me some Julie Brown, but I, I just don't understand why Stranger Candy. But anyway, uh, it was it was the best TV show, and Stephen Colbert was on it, and he was hilarious. I actually, and you might be wondering, like, why are you talking about Stephen Colbert on your video game show? Well, a, because he's awesome, and does he have a video game? He really should. Technically, he is involved video game wise because uh, he did have a song that was in Rock Band. Remember? Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Charlene, I'm right behind you. Yeah, from like, but that was like from the 80s. That wasn't even something he did recently. That was a long time ago when he was first starting out. That's right. I remember that. But I, I truly consider the man an inspiration. So I am like really happy for him. You know, um, some of you that listen to the show for a while know that I'm a corporate trainer by day. And so I, I consider his teacher character in Strangers with Candy like an inspiration. Not that I'm, I literally do a lot of that stuff in class. Where's your permission slip, Mr. Noblet? Shut your dirty little mouth. It's just <laughs> amazing. Anyway, 
Ah, good times. There should be a Strangers with Candy video game. That would be an amazing idea for the video game jam that's kicking off tonight if it wasn't something copyrighted. <laughs> or written. Telltale Games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's something Telltale Games could adapt is the... Uh, you know uh, what? If he really wanted to... Well, obviously, he's going to be really busy with you know the uh, late show, but uh, man... If he really wanted to bring Strangers with Candy back, I think he'd probably do it now. <laughs> uh, Bobby's in our chat room uh, saying that uh, Stephen Colbert made that song recently. He just made it look like the 80s, but it was a new song. So I was convinced it was before from his X of 57 days or something. I was convinced it was from a long time ago. That's hilarious. All right. And uh, in chat, they mentioned that he's way into Lords of the Lord of the Rings. I heard he has a cameo in the movie. He does have a cameo in the movie, and he also did like a photo shoot where he was dressed up like all the characters, and it's pretty awesome. Like That's they amazing. did some really good makeup job on him. Amazing, amazing. Uh, let's get into some video game news. Um, I know uh, I I I have I think officially lost interest in these things because it's just been too crazy. But if they made one out of Stephen Colbert, I might be interested again. And I'm going to talk about the Amiibos. And, you know, we talked about this a couple weeks ago on the show when they were first launching. And yeah. People, we didn't really know, like, what they were. And Nintendo really, I mean, for all practical purposes, didn't really reveal what the hell these things are going to do until the last minute. And I don't think people still understood it until they finally played Smash Brothers and got to use the Amiibo or unlock stuff in uh, Mario Kart or so forth. But this Amiibo stuff, I mean... I don't know if it's just the perspective of me as a gamer, but this stuff really feels like it's like the Beanie Babies of this year. It, it is nuts. It, it, how yeah, it's just I don't crazy. Know. I to still find. don't see the point to it. I mean, yeah, it's cool. To, I, don't get me wrong. I think it's cool to have collectibles and stuff like that. If you want to put that stuff up on a shelf and have it look nice, then that's fine. Those things look pretty cool. But I just think, like, even looking at like the pop figures and stuff like that, I think those look more interesting than some of the amiibo figures. And and like, and that was always my complaint with not only just the amiibos, but also the Skylanders and the Disney Infinity stuff. Is they're stuck to that base. You can't do anything for them. I think it would be awesome, like, you know, kind of like look at Legos or something like that, where like the figure would come off and you'd be able to do stuff with that. Now I understand that, you know, they would be afraid of losing the base or something like that, but somehow get that RFID chip in there where you could do that. I I sort of understand why these things took off though. And I think that just speaks to the volume of the classicness and uh, pop culture infused of the characters that Nintendo has created. Which, you know, last week we were talking about the Sony hacks and the movie that, uh, you know, the Mario movie. And we talked about how, you know, this movie is going to be big no matter what. Even if it's bad, it's animated. And there's going to be tons of people that are going to take their own kids to see a Super Mario Brothers movie because uh, they grew up with Mario Brothers, right? I mean, you did... You know, you did your kid's room in all Mario Brothers stuff. Yeah. Yeah, which is which was amazing, by the way. Mm-hmm. But it just speaks to the volume that these characters are. Which, by the way, quick follow-up, because I should work this in at some point. Uh, there is a quick follow-up to the whole uh, Sony hack and the movie leak stuff. And that is a little bit of a coyness out of Miyamoto about the Mario movie leak. And he said, uh, I heard something about that this morning. What's interesting is that over the past 20 years, people come to us on a fairly, fairly regular basis about creating Mario movies. There are times that those ideas end right when they bring them to us, and other times we'll listen to presentations. It's not very unusual, and it's something we've been doing for a very long time. I don't particularly have a vision that the next inter- iteration of Mario is going to be in film. Here's the thing. I, I, I get that answer totally, but it is absolutely a non-answer answer. And I think in Miyamoto's head, the next iteration of Mario Brothers would not be in film. I don't. I would think that Miyamoto probably never wanted that first film to happen. But I also think that the it's been enough time now I, to where we can kind of forget yeah, about that. And I also think ultimately it's not up to Miyamoto. Like, yes, I understand I mean, he's the granddaddy of it, but at the end of the day, if a boardroom signs off at, on it, it's going to happen. Look at it this way, okay? There's Batman and Robin. Yeah. And now there's the new Christopher Nolan movies, right. which right, you know. It, one does not soil the rest. I mean, right. if anything, it makes them better. So I don't think just because there was... And don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the Mario Brothers movie. I know it was kind of stupid, but you know what? A lot of the movies that came out around the same time were kind of stupid. Judge Dredd had some right. really stupid moments to it. You know, just something like that. You know, i okay with that because that was just kind of the way things were. Like, or Double Dragon. Remember how terrible that movie was? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's just... 
it was loosely based on it, but it was just kind of like that was just how it was going. So anyway, I, I, yeah. not not to digress too much, I consider that a non-answer answer out of Miyamoto. And ultimately, yeah, a, as as rough as this is to hear, I don't think it's up to him at the end of the day. And I that that also that answer wasn't really him saying no. He just says, I think the next thing is not going to be a movie. But I don't know. It, it still strikes me as a non-answer answer. But anyway. Rewinding a little bit, I wanted to talk about the Amiibos because, you know, the reason why these things are doing so well is it just speaks to the strength of the characters behind these uh, Amiibo. And I don't think it has really anything to do with the game functionality at all. I think grown adults want to collect those little toys because it's, it's, it's okay. Unlike Beanie Babies, for whatever, it's socially acceptable <laughs> for 30-year-old men and women to be collecting those toys. Unlike Beanie Babies, which kind of got the grandma there's people, stigma. There's grown people that collect those Skylanders and the Disney Infinity stuff That's as true. well. Yeah. So, you know. Shane was one of them. I I'm know. not surprised. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, so, Amiibo is going crazy this holiday season. It, it, you know, d whether you think they're useful in the games or not, people want those figurines. And it's, it's kind of becoming a mess. And uh, for me personally, this whole f freak out around it is kind of turning me off to it in a big way. But... For some people, it just drives them even more. But uh, some of the big news that came out about Amiibo this week is that Toys R Us started canceling Amiibo pre-orders and purchases pretty much out of the blue. Uh, a big chunk of this was the Lucario Amiibo pre-orders, which I believe, weren't th wasn't that the figure that's going to be exclusive to Toys R Us? I don't remember. I think it was. So, you know, obviously people I are pissed. I can't keep track of what, you know, which ones are exclusive where because it's a big mess. So people have called Toys R Us to figure out what's going on. They've been advised that Nintendo did a product delay and that Amiibo are being canceled as a result until there is a clear indication of how much stock there's going to be to get in. Well, that sounds like Nintendo. <laughs> now there's speculation that this Wave 3 might be held back until beyond February to make sure there is enough Amiibo figures to meet the demand which is very high. I could see that. And once again, you know, before I was kind of under the suspicion that it was an artificial shortage, but maybe not anymore. But then again, I just, I don't know how hard these things could be to manufacture. It's a piece of plastic with an RFID chip in it. I mean, it's, um, I, I can't imagine it'd be that difficult. Some comments in our chat room over at live.vognetwork.com. Uh, YYR says, Nintendo should capitalize on the Amiibo popularity by actually delivering some new games in long ignored franchises. Uh, next year is going to be really interesting to see, you know, instead of having to back end Amiibo into existing ideas, which I think they had to do for a lot of games this year, even Smash Brothers to an extent. Uh, I think they, they did it well in Smash Brothers, but I still think that was something that was kind of added on late in development. But next year, as we start to look to, look to games like Splatoon and Mario Maker, it's going to be very interesting to see how the Amiibo work in the games from the outset. Um, let's see. Also, some comments in our chat room. Uh, we have... Uh, Let's see. Uh, Act F saying that I had a Lucario Amiibo pre-ordered and got canceled. Kaijudo says, I'm an adult. I buy Amiibos not to collect them. I buy them to train them to fight. I, I actually think, Kaijudo, while, while I certainly respect that perspective and I don't think you're alone in that, I kind of actually think, I think more people are buying this not to use them with Smash Brothers necessarily. Just if... If what I see on Twitter and all that is any indication, granted, that's my perception of the world, but I just get the feeling that more people are buying these just because they're Nintendo figurines than anything else. I don't know. What do you think, Loki? I think definitely that they would be buying them. They're just, I don't know. I've seen better Nintendo figurines. I have some of the better Nintendo figurines um, in my son's room. It's just that that's kind of my thing is like these are like what 12 bucks for a little teeny tiny figure and i've seen you know better action figures that cost less than that and it's just i don't know, it kind of bugs me that they're so expensive because of that now by the way loki this is kind of funny that you said that about the card because i do want to throw out here that miyamoto has actually addressed that uh in an interview that he did with abc he actually said quote we're not making promises for certain figures but the way amiibo is designed is that certain games can have amiibo specifically for that game other games can take advantage of past amiibo that developers want to make their game compatible with in the future we have the option if certain amiibo figures are no longer available in stores to release an amiibo in card form with the same function functionality so they're they're and, it's and out there it's going to be a matter of time that um someone's just going to hack that anyways and then you'll just buy a card and it'll be whatever amiibo you want without having to buy anything but i mm. i don't know i just 
I'm not getting into it is what it, it well, it probably doesn't help that I don't have a Wii U, so, you know, but even if I had a Wii U, I don't think I would really want to buy these things. It just seems like a big waste of money, but you know what? There's a lot of things that I buy that are probably a waste of money to other people, yeah, so that's just... that's true. That's true. You know, whatever you want to spend your money on. Jamie, I'm dying to check in with you and your perspective. Let me uh, get to a couple other comments in chat first, though. Uh, Kaijudo, I love this comment. I was burned as a kid when I wanted Star Wars toys and could never find them. I had no idea grown men were buying them to keep them in a box. And uh, SSG 100 Matt says, they're Nintendo's Beanie Babies. People will collect the fuck out of them if there is a demand for them. Jamie, you're no stranger to video game collecting. You've yeah. done your own in the past, but surely you've got to be looking at this going, this is, this is big. What do you think? Dan and I already decided it was a waste of money for us. Really? And I don't need to have any in my cubicle now because my neighbor purchased them and put them up on our <laughs> cubicle wall. So I now have the never-ending battle between Red R Rico and Link. Now, is that because you're not a Wii U owner at this time that you don't really I have an interest in the Amiibo? I wouldn't have had an interest in it anyway. Interesting. Um, I could have played Skylanders if I wanted to. Or I could play Disney Infinity if I wanted to. I have a Rocket Raccoon. That's mm -hmm. all I care about. Mm -hmm. um, and Which I have to thank Codeman for. <laughs> but... Um, I I don't really care. I hardly play my DS anymore. I've been playing lots of Dragon Age. If there were, you know, Dragon Age amiibo figures that I could model, I wouldn't even do that probably. I don't know. If they had a Garrus figure that unlocked something in the game, you'd probably be on that. So you think this, so I, I think I'm hearing this. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but this is what I seem to be hearing is that maybe you're shifting away and you've kind of been shifting for the past couple of years away from consoles more to PC. Pretty much. Hmm. You know, I, um, I, I, it actually right around the time I had my hand surgery Yeah, was when I started making the shift just because mm. it hurt to hold a controller for too long. Makes sense. And, um, I can, I, I like modifying my games. Right. So, which was you know, really Mass Effect and DA2 for me. Um, I I don't know. Those are really more my, my thing right now. I don't really want to, I don't know. And I'm also kind of um, anti-competition these days too. Because people are making competitions out of things that have no business being competitions or being competitive. And... It's back into the whole, you know, stupid consumerism thing. I just really, I kind of look at the whole thing with a, a little edge of disgust. Hmm. I don't care what you spend your money on, but you could be doing better things. Now, um, Act Deft actually sent along a little update uh, to this story. He sent me a private message being one of these people that uh, actually pre-ordered saying, uh, Toys R Us sent an email today to everyone that had their Amiibo pre-orders canceled. They're reinstating orders and letting others make another reservation for Amiibos, but Toys R Us said that they messed up the orders, not Nintendo. Very interesting little follow-up because I feel like I'm hearing a conflict between what some of their own customer service people were saying and this. But again, that's no real surprise there that, you know, something was different uh, way at the top than it really was. So, hmm. Anyway, I'm sure this is just going to uh, continue over the next few weeks, uh, this whole amiibo fever. Um, I, but me, I, like, I, I'm not willing to go camp out at the store for two hours to get one of these figures. Like, I don't need them that bad. I like them well enough. I kind of want a Mega Man one, but I'm not going to fight like crazy for one. If I can't just go online and get it, then I'm done. And my understanding is if I haven't already pre-ordered one, I ain't getting one, I guess, at this point. So, eh, we'll see. Like, I'm just, I don't have to have one that badly. I think they're cool. Like, I, I do really want the Mega Man one, but uh, is, my, is my life going to be over if I don't get one? Nah. Will I be jealous of friends that have them and I don't have it? Not really, actually. I think I think I think I've kind of hit that point. So, anyway, all right. Um, let's travel around and look at our gaming weeks and the types of games that we have been playing this week. Uh, Dark Sakura, you haven't been playing 3DS, but what have you been playing? Actually, I've been bringing my 3DS with me because I'm doing a new puzzle now. But um, I'm playing Dragon Age. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine um, actually started playing Final Fantasy 14. So I'll be playing that a bit more later. Um, so, uh, yeah, pretty much just Dragon Age right now. Um, I am 
I'm taking my sweet time with it. I've already talked to people who've beaten the game several times over, but I've been playing just a little bit after work, exploring, looking around, you know, making up banter in my head. And I've really been finding it a, a fun creative outlet lately. So I'm I'm content to take my sweet time with it. Do you do a lot of mods with Dragon Age or is there not a lot available yet? It's funny that you say that there are there's only one mod out there right now and it's a camera mod. I haven't put it in yet. Um but basically BioWare said well that Frostbite's really going to be difficult for other people to mod. They're not going to be able to do the same mods with this like they're doing for Mass Effect 3 or for the previous Dragon Age. And basically the entire modding community has said, "Oh yeah, watch." And they're working on breaking it. Um, the guy who did the uh, the tools for uh, Mass Effect, Warranty Voider, I think is what his name was, um, at least online, um, has already started uh, working on uh, tools to uh, go through the code for uh, Frostbite. So I think it's only a matter of time. We've already had people who've, able, who've been able to rip the uh, character models and have done their own uh, models for the, the characters. But... Um, well, the good news is is that they practice on Frostbite with Dragon Age, and that way when the new Mass Effect comes out, oh, all yeah. these tools will be ready to go. <laughs> and I honestly think that the from the impression I've been getting from the Bioware folks that it's sort of like, huh, let's see if they can do it. You know, like, we don't see how without all this, so let's see how inventive you'll be. And I, I, I think that it's not necessarily an active discouragement from doing it, but of a we actually just don't think it's possible type of thing. So, of course, challenge accepted. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, she put her mic down, so that's it for her gaming week. Loki, your gaming week. Um, really, I just played uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes. Um, I'm just you know, finishing up. My son wanted to play a bunch during the week. So uh, while he was just running around the city doing stuff, I was busy um, knocking out all the races and all of the... Um, little activities I have to do to unlock all the characters and get 100% in the game. Which brings me to a couple things about this. One, some of the controls are fucking terrible. Like, their flight controls, I seriously want to punch the guy in the face that came up with their fucking flight controls in that game. Because it's just, it's so goddamn frustrating that it doesn't work right. Because basically, you tap the jump button twice to go into like a flight mode or whatever and then you would tap uh was it circle twice or whatever to get out of that and land but also x and circle are you know for elevation so x makes you go up circle makes you go down so you can kind of get where i'm coming at here first off the uh up and down vertical movement in there is very sluggish so you have to kind of hold it down but so if you're trying to kind of fine tune it and get it so that you're aiming at the right speed, a couple things happens. Either you tap X too fast and so that sends you into like a kind of a burst speed thing. So you fly super fast and you can't get out of it really fast either. Or you just land on the ground because you hit circle twice and you just fall out of the sky. So I seriously it was like cursing this game like, I fucking hate you, stupid game. I don't want to play this thing anymore. <laughs> Then they had certain races where they thought it would be a great idea to lock the fucking camera in a really awkward position while you were playing that race. I seriously want to strangle people that were in charge of the camera and the flight controls in that game. The rest of the game's fine. A little buggy at times, but those two Care- careful, aspects. Careful what you say on the internet, Loki. You want to strangle them with love and understanding and a better understanding of I physics. just want to smack them upside the head <laughs> until they realize that the error in their ways. I mean, come on. This is like how many... You know, Lego games have you made so far? I mean, there this isn't the first one of flight in it. I mean, you've had several Batman games. Anger and, leads to the dark side. And so, um, you know, there's you can't tell me they haven't figured out that this is. And then here's the other thing too: is like you have a controller with like several buttons that are not being used at all. But you decide to map like you know the elevation and all this shit on the two buttons. Great, that's good for kids to learn stuff, but it's fucking impossible to be able to just maneuver accurately through the game. So that's really my only thing. But now that I'm done with that, you know, all the races and stuff, um, it's kind of, you know, big relief because now I don't do that crap anymore. I just have to go through all the levels and get all the unlocks and everything. So 
I'm very close to platinuming the game. All right. Which will be my first platinum on so uh, As much as it drives Nerd. you crazy, you're determined to platinum it. I, oh, point. yeah. So at this point, you know, I've already suffered through it enough, so <laughs> I, I need to platinum it. So, Alan Alchemy in our chat room over at live.vognetwork.com says, Little Josh gets sent home from preschool for saying, Bullshit controls fucking work. What the fuck? After throwing his Power Ranger action figures into the air. No, we were... Uh, <laughs> we were... Um, was the other day, my wife got inspired by watching was it Jimmy Kimmel or something like that on the internet and um she was asking him what bad words he knew and so he only knew like stupid and like something something like something had to do with poop. I don't remember what it was. It was like poopy head or something like that. It was like those are the only two words that he could think of. Probably for the best. Yes. Probably for the best. I have called the game stupid though before I'm like uh, and under my breath, I'm like, fucking, I hate this fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's when you 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 walk out casually in the backyard, shut the sliding glass door, and go fuck. <laughs> it's like, god damn it, this game is good, but like, but I seriously though, one of the best characters in the game though is Squirrel Girl uh-huh. because she has like the most useless powers. Like, she has one power where you charge it up, and for no reason, like squirrels run around, like they crawl all over her, and then they kind of explode off of her. And she throws squirrels at people as her attack. She throws squirrels. It's like bungee ferret tossing, but with squirrels. <laughs> you know what? I don't think it uh, made our show roll tonight, but I'm very excited for uh, the Bravely Default sequel, Bravely Second. They announced a cat girl character, like a cat girl class, and mm-hmm. so it's uh, it, that involves cats. How can this be bad? How, if she throws cats at people or whatever, has cats do her bidding? I'm I'm all for it. It's like a summoner, but with cats. Heck yeah! Sounds good. I just want my party to be four cat people. Sounds good to me. So that was it. Um, right. I also tried to play a little bit more of I Am Bread, and the game was really frustrating. So I, <laughs> I just pretty much stopped right away. It's like it's even worse than like Surgeon Simulator for me. I mean, same people, and it's just like I can't figure out what I'm, I'm supposed to be doing to get you know off the floor. Once I hit the floor, it's just like oh, I'm gonna land on the skateboard. And I'm gonna ride the skateboard over the counter, and I'm gonna crawl up the wall. And that just didn't happen because there's like a grip meter and stuff. And so the more you hold down on the grip you eventually lose grip so i i'm just so frustrated at that game it's funny but i just don't want to play it all right well that's it for your gaming week i will talk quickly about and i haven't my- even bought anything on steam i've been very good. good for you so far i've been i've been good and not getting anything on the steam sale yet either but uh, i've been voting every day to get my card and i did uh what i disenchanted some of the lo- which was a brilliant idea on steam's part by the way to get people to just destroy things in their inventory that they would otherwise sell uh I uh, I disenchanted a bunch of uh, crap in my inventory. I was like backgrounds I would never use and stuff like that. And I bought like a pack of cards or something. I don't know. Hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, um, let's see. So my gaming week. I've been playing more Final Fantasy 13 on PC. Um, my partner Alan bought me a brand new monitor for the holidays. So now I have two widescreen monitors that I'm using, and this new one is bright and it looks great and it does like super resolution. So I can play Final Fantasy 13 in these these really obscene graphic modes, and I'm so happy. The game has come a long way now. Once I got past all the bullshit bugs, like the graphical issues from the initial release, and you know the fact that it frame skips if you don't have a controller plugged in, like what the hell? Once you get past all that, it's so beautiful on uh pc and i'm 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 on like chapter seven so like i'm i'm pretty committed to this playthrough so uh i'm excited i i've been having a good time with that and uh continuing to play some other games that i've been playing off and on final Fantasy 14 return to diablo 3 continuing with seasons um Alan and I had a little squabble over Diablo 3 about two weeks ago, so I kind of put it on ice for a little while. But I went back to the game, and I, I found a really I, – I really like in Diablo 3 that you can just respec your character at any time. If you find that the build you don't, you're using doesn't work for you, that's fine. Respec. And you can even, you know, re-roll the gear thanks to Miriam, the enchanter. You can you can uh, try to get, like, I went from a, a ice mage to a fire mage. And so I re-rolled all the cold bonuses. And now they're things like either fire bonuses or crit damage. And uh, I'm doing way more damage and I'm way more efficient. I'm having way more fun as a fire mage now as opposed to the ice mage I was playing. And that's probably in part that I was getting a bunch of fire mage drops. So I, I was like, okay, the game's trying to tell me something. So I switched. And I'm, now I'm, I'm flying through Torment 1 riffs like they're easy so i have to even bump up the difficulty a little bit so i'm having a lot of fun with diablo 3 again um new games i have played one new game this week i did play one brand new game this week that came out on playstation 4 i think it was one of the only new game releases this past week i decided to plunk down the ten dollars for a classic game 
It's very hard to screw this game up and uh, do something wrong with it. Tetris. I bought Tetris Ultimate, which was released on the PlayStation 4 this week. And uh, it is Ubisoft that made this port. And um, I'm going to tell you, uh, there's some things I liked that they're trying to do with this. You know, they're, they're trying to make Tetris more social. You know, like make it more like a social game, which I get. That's where gaming's going. So, like, apparently, some of my play sessions have been ghosted. And, like, like I, Fifth Dream in chat earlier was saying, oh, I was playing against one of your ghosts earlier. And I was like, oh, shit. I didn't know the game was recording me. Like I sometimes what I'll do is if I screw up too early, I'll just drop all the pieces, you know, and I'll just fill up the screen. It's it's the rage quit of Tetris, right? You just eternally drop all your pieces and start over. So I'm like, oh shit. If Fifth Dream is playing one of my bots that just rage quits, that's not a lot of fun. So that's good to keep in mind. There's a lot of different modes and yada yada yada. But here's the thing that really gets me about Tetris Ultimate. It's buggy. Like bad buggy. Like really bad buggy like how the fuck did they release this in its current state buggy and it's mostly one major bug but that bug is frame hiccups now let us think about the game of tetris especially when you're playing on level 11 in endless mode is that okay for the game to suddenly hang for even just three frames while you're trying to rotate a piece or drop a piece at just the right moment? Absolutely not. And it was to the point where I was like, did any QA happen on this game at all? Because that would have been noticed if it was played on a real PlayStation 4. Maybe that's something that didn't show up on a dev PS4. I get that. But was this even play tested on a real PS4? Well, was I, it? Because I'm not the only one that's noticed no, this. No, I saw... Was I... I Unfortunately, went to IGN to watch like the couple, you know, now they're calling it Let's Plays, but it's not really. They were, had some issues with the game. I guess they had to literally unconnect it from the internet in order to like drop those frame skips or whatever. Um, and it to the point where it was like taking a super long time to load stuff. And like there was even frame skips during like the whole Ubisoft logo and everything. Um, and to the point where like they're trying to drop the piece and it was taking several seconds to drop that piece and stuff. And apparently they said, yeah, we tried this even on a retail um, system, on de a debug system, and it was on several different ones, and it was still having the same problems. So um, I, I don't know what's up with I, Ubisoft, man. It, it, it's bad yeah. when you can't even get Tetris. I mean, Tetris is not that complex of a fucking game. I, yep. I think the power of the PlayStation 4, and from what I hear, it's only the PlayStation 4 version that's doing it. Hmm. I would think that the PlayStation 4 can run Tetris. Just... I think it can. Now, Fifth Dream says, I was playing it on remote play and I had no issues, but then I don't play as fast as Rob's Ghost. I'm going to say, you know, I, I was made aware of the IGN video via um, Twitter, and it was after I already bought the game and I was playing it, and I was like, God damn it. They're like, wh why is this game buggy? And then I saw that tweet come in because somebody retweeted it, and I was like, oh, okay, it's not just me, and I watched the video. Now, here's the weird thing. I didn't notice it as bad as they do, and, but that seems weird to me that there would be kind of that variance there. But I didn't notice it as bad, but I definitely noticed it. And it was definitely the point where I'm like, Ubisoft, you need to fucking fix your QA processes. You need something, like something clearly is broken. Because how many games is that now that have gone out the door with very obvious bugs in them? Fix your processes, please. It's embarrassing. It's Tetris, for God's sake. Tetris. I could play Tetris on an Apple... What, what was the very first... It was made for the PS... Like, PS2s. Like, old-school IBM Basics, right? Was the original Tetris. I'm talking I'm talking the guy A in Game Russia... Game Boy could play the Tetris. I know, yeah. right? So the power of the PlayStation 4 cannot handle Tetris. Give me a break. <sighs> A TI calculator could play Tetris. Now, I do have faith... That thanks to, I mean, if I just sat here and bitched about it, nothing would happen. But IGN's got a lot more pull than I do. I'm sure because of them putting out that video, the game will get a patch and it'll be fine. But it's like, it's yet another one of those but why things. Should we like, have to wait why for did we have to wait for the patch? I mean, you release the game the next to last week of December anyway. Would, have de would a delay until February have killed you? Uh, it's not like I was sitting here going, I can't fucking wait for Tetris. Yeah. Like, it was more one of the things where it was like, oh, Tetris came out. I like Tetris. Huh? I'll get it. I would have had the same reaction in February after you fixed your shit. Oh, my God. It's just, it just blows my mind. 
Well, that was the thing. It's like it was a lot of people when they bought it, you know, they're kind of, eh, you know, there's a few games that Ubisoft has released that haven't been that great, been kind of a little buggy, you know. But it's Tetris. I mean, how hard can Tetris be to program? I mean, it can't be that bad. <laughs> YYR in chat says, don't worry, Ubisoft will patch it in in a few days, not to fix the game breaking bugs, but to put a face on the faceless L block. It's funny you say that because in battle mode, like you actually get blocks that have mustaches on them and other little things that happen. Oh, just, just cute little things little things that have to do with the uh, the battle thing. It's like playing Tetranet, basically. They basically had, you know, so there are some cool things about this game that basically you can play Tetranet and that type of thing. But, you know, again, when you have frame skip in a game that badly needs it, like Tetris, it's like it ruins the whole fucking thing. It doesn't matter if they're doing all these other cool things to the game. The game is ruined. It's tainted. Jason says that Tetris on the PlayStation 4 doesn't look or act like Tetris on TINES or whatever. To which I say, I didn't ask for them to make me a fancier-looking Tetris. It's fucking Tetris. I don't need it to have, like, fucking, you know, clouds in the background or shiny blocks or whatever. It's fucking Tetris. It doesn't matter. (laughs) Uh, and here, I do have one other, this is a minor, more minor complaint about the game, but it is an issue I have with Tetris uh, l- lately, and I think the last round of Tetris games did this too, and I don't understand this, and that is, what is the obsession with T-spins? What is the obsession with counting T-spins and having achievements for T-spins and getting l- uh, T-spins as a statistic? I don't understand. Like... What I, I had to look up like what a T-spin is. And it's, by the way, it's when you take the T-block and you rotate it in to fill a gap. Like it's not, you're not dropping it to fill a gap. You rotate it over to fill a gap that like might be on the side or something. That's what a T-spin is. And it's like, oh, I thought I was already doing that. But yet my statistic for T-spin, I guess, sit at zero. But it's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't get why that has to be tracked the only t-spin i'm aware of is you know with blue and where they're flying plane and Mm. i guess that was tailspin though (sighs) so anyway uh and yyr in chat says yeah i think those are dumb too and alan alchemy says the t-block is the most versatile block yet it's the line blocks that i always tend to put in my hold queue anyway the the uh, Nintendo DS version of Tetris remains the definitive version for me. Or the Game Boy. If you want to go all the way back to the Game Boy version, that one too. I think the DS one is the best one out there, and it still hasn't been trumped well, on all these newer the, this consoles. came out on 3DS as well. Oh, did it? Yeah. On 3DS, but not... This isn't the Nintendo version with like the, the No, Mario this f- version that just came out from no. Ubisoft just came out. No, but- Nintendo did one on the DS, which yeah. certainly you could play on a 3DS, but Nintendo did one on the DS that, in my mind, is still the definitive version. But maybe that has to do with the love of Nintendo characters thing we talked about earlier, because all that retro nostalgia is all over that game. But I even think without that, it's still the definitive version. I mean, because it's the Game Boy version, but modernized. And in many ways, I I think if you said, Rob, the Game Boy version is the definitive version, I would be like, you know, I I respect that angle. That's a hard one to argue with. The Game Boy and the DS ones are really neck and neck. So, anyway... (laughs) <laughs> Alan Alchemy in chat says everyone loves it when a T block shows up unlike the square one that's like hello I'm here sorry I'm so fat frown no the ones that get it's the Z blocks that get me the Z and the S block because I, I always I can never visualize like okay what's the jagged pattern is this, is this the one that fits the jagged Those on the right the ones and left? that you used to slide in yeah yeah and you know, I've used it that way too but do we count Z spins or S spins no we count T spins Anyway, <laughs> Jamie just rolled her eyes. That makes for great radio. <laughs> All right. Uh, SSJ100 Matt says, I came back in the middle of this discussion, and my initial thought of T-spin stats were stats of how many times you spun the teacups at Disneyland. Oh, I'd win that fucking game. i win that fucking game. Purple it, ones for life. It is not the teacups unless somebody barfs. All right? That's what I'm saying. That's why you go in the purple ones. They go faster. <laughs> At night. They go faster at night, for sure. Everything goes faster at night. All right. uh, We're going to get into some news here in a minute here. Uh, Also, more information on the Vogue Game Jam coming up in Part B. We're going to kick this off tonight, and uh, us and Bobby Blackwolf, and hopefully some of the other shows at Vogue, too, teaming together to encourage everybody out there to create something, damn it. You know, last week we had the guys from Cooking with Unity on the show, which I know Loki found very, very motivating, and I thought those guys were excellent motivators. You know, they've worked in the industry, and my, my favorite thing out of that whole interview was when Max said, you know, I, I just want you to make a game. I want you to make a game. And I thought, 
Yes, I want you to make a game too. What can I do to help? All right, we've got a network. Let's do this. Let's do this VOG game jam. So together, uh, the OLR live audience tonight, we're going to pick a theme through our tried and true listless mechanism. So we're going to get to that in part B, and that will be the theme for the game jam. But you know what? If you're not comfortable programming in Unity and you don't want to learn just yet, that's okay. Use RPG Maker. Use um, use Twine. Use uh, Commodore 64 Basic. Make a level in Little Big Planet if you want, or create a level in another game. But just create something, damn it. That's all we want. We want people to create and uh, and get creative. So all we're going to throw you tonight is a spark, and we want you to, to run with it and create a fire. And who knows? Who knows? Sometimes big, big games come out of game jams. So wasn't uh, Super Hexagon born out of a game jam? I could be wrong. I don't remember. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that suddenly, you know, goes from game jam to like, you know, Steam release. And I'm not necessarily saying that, that that's going to happen, but it might. So stay tuned. All right. That'd be awesome. So more info on that in part B. Uh, for now, quick housekeeping. Uh, we will actually still be here throughout the holidays. Um, the holidays fall on pretty convenient days for us. Not so much for Hort House, but for us. Uh, so we will still be here next Sunday live and the Sunday after. Um, the holidays will not be interfering with OLR schedule this year. Uh, however, uh, I am foreseeing off in the future, we will not be here January 18th. That's way off in the future, so I'll be giving you reminders. We're still determining if we're going to pre-record that week or what we're going to do. We can't do an early show. I'm going to be out of town. Um, I guess I'm okay to say this on the show. Uh, I'm going to Seattle. Alan and I are going to go to Seattle, visit some friends of his that he's known online forever and never met. So uh, I'm going to go to Seattle over Martin Luther King weekend. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I haven't been up to Seattle in about five years, but I love it up there. And I can't wait to do all that touristy shit again. Space Needle, EMP, Aquarium. First Starbucks, Pike's Market, I'm going to do all that shit. So maybe if we rent a car, maybe I can talk Alan into, let's just, let's just drive by Nintendo headquarters and see if I can see Reggie. I just, just drive by. I got to. After all these years, I got to just drive by and wave or something. See if I can sneak into the cafeteria. Who knows? All right. <laughs> uh, so anyway, more, more info on that to come uh, when we get a little closer into January. Uh, Tiger Claw asks in chat, will next week's OLR be a best of show? Uh, I am thinking we will do something to cap off the end of the year. Uh, us being OLR and haven't been around for so long. We, we seem to do something different for the last show of the year every year. I don't think we found our thing yet, but certainly we will be looking back on 2014 and talking about our favorite games of the year, even though, you know what, guys, we don't possibly have time to play everything. We can't sit here and say this is the definitive best game of 2014. But we can tell you our favorite games, so we will at least go over that next week. And I'm still going back and forth in my head. There's two that I keep flip-flopping, so we'll see. Uh, anyhow, uh, let's get into some news after all that. Let's uh, get into what is going on in the game industry this week. Not as busy of a week, but there's still some stuff going on that's worth talking about. Right, Loki? That's right. Uh, so, of course, you know some of the big news this week uh, had to do with Minecraft and the announcement of Minecraft Story Mode, a Telltale game series. And apparently it's going to be a separate game, not necessarily an add-on to Minecraft, but a separate game that will be released on uh, PC, Mac, mobile devices, and Xbox and PlayStation consoles, they say. Um the game, they haven't really said too much about it yet other than, you know, um, they're not creating an official story for, the, you know, the main character, Steve, but apparently it's going to have some sort of story that revolves around, you know, uh, user-created stuff. So, I don't know, you know, to be honest, they kind of already have this. It's actually a mode you can set up your different worlds in. I think it's, I forget what the actual name of it's called, like fantasy or something like that. But basically allows you, you know, someone to create a world in creative mode and then basically to limit the amount of um, building and breaking that you can do in it. And it has a lot of, you know, kind of narrative stuff based off of that. Um, you can, like, you know, set up events and things. But cool i guess i mean that'll be neat to check out when it comes out um I, there's I a there's a lot of hate for this idea out there a lot of people are really pissed off about right, it i don't kinda, buy it then i kind of don't i don't get that though like i understand that okay well a telltale minecraft game is not going to be really minecraft in the traditional sense but at the same time it's like telltale has kind of done really good things with a lot of the properties they have 
a story for Minecraft is really not something that's been explored at all. I don't, I don't understand where the negativity is coming from other than it's something different and I don't like it. I don't. I don't know. What's I think the problem? It, I don't see the problem. I just think they're, they're immediately thinking that, oh, another Minecraft game after Microsoft bought a mo, they must be selling out or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, now maybe I, maybe it's Minecraft oversaturation like that. I, I could maybe see that because, you know, Minecraft really is everywhere, but it's not just this video game. I mean, you know, go into Target or anything like they've got all this Minecraft licensed shit everywhere. Like another game is really uh really the least of it but you know i gotta say as much as i'm not always really into like poking into people's personal business and all this gaming news you know it's out there that notch bought that mansion in beverly hills you see that yeah it was it was him and he outbid beyonce and jay-z <laughs> like, like really really just just think about that for a minute the the monarchy of beyonce and jay-z Got outbid by some nerd for this mansion. <laughs> I think that's absolutely hilarious. It's it's kind of awesome. Probably did it for spite. You've because you've got to admit you got to you got to see Beyonce sitting there going, "Who is this nerd <laughs> that just bought our house?" You know what though? Props to him. Props to him. I I saw that picture of him with his legs up with the whole like candy bar or whatever in the background, and I was just like. The only thing that picture is missing is a gigantic bong, I think. But anyway, not that I endorse that, but I'm just saying. It seems to be the one thing that's missing. You can buy one elaborate bong with his kind of money. <laughs> right? He could just, he could just it's turn It's like the, the fucking Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory <laughs> of bongs. I mean, it's just he can, ridiculous. He can turn the pool into a giant one. Anyway, sorry, Loki. I don't mean to digress. He could from... build a fucking chocolate he factory could. like out of Willy yeah. He could. That's what I'd do with all that money. Wouldn't you? No. I just want a new Balloompa. <laughs> I want it now, I want Dad. it now. I want a golden goose. All right, anyway. Uh, anyways. But Daddy, I want the goose that lays the golden eggs. And that actually, actually, it was the squirrels. But anyway, uh, Loki. So then on top of that, you know, the Minecraft film has had a little bit of a setback. Apparently, the director, Sean Levy, has left the project. Basically saying, you know, Warner Brothers asked me to develop... Um, how this might be a you know story for a movie because it's a non-narrative game and we came up with an approach that felt good but when they discussed it with mojang they were like that doesn't sound like what we want so so yes unfortunately he couldn't really go from there um i don't know i'm not too terribly disappointed by that maybe we'll see something with this telltale game that's that's the direction that he wants to go with it or something you know maybe the story that we see laid out here because honestly there isn't much of a story there well, alan does point out in our chat room over at live.vognetwork.com alan alchemy says the original minecraft doesn't really have a story but there is a long ass objective to find farm enderman farm or go into the netherworld or hell go to the ender plane kill the ender dragon which most people don't even do they just fuck around and explore caves and make badass houses with roller coasters but if they wanted to explore that story about the ender dragon i'd be interested in it i just think they need more to it it's kind of short yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, oh, we just put this there because people wanted an end to the game, and I, I also it's not really an end, but I would have a concern for the the clock. And I said this back when Microsoft bought Minecraft. I sort of feel like the clock on Minecraft is ticking, and I think the ultimate climax to this whole thing is going to be when Microsoft inevitably releases Minecraft Two, because you know they're going to, you know they're going to, they release Minecraft Two, and I kind of think that'll be the beginning of the end. I just, you know. I, I realize a lot of people might brand me a hater for thinking that, or that I don't get it because there's more to it with all the licensing and all that. But I just, I just kind of think the bubble's going to burst eventually. And then there's going to be – because there'll be another big new thing that everybody gets into that people can create and explore their own stuff. You know what I mean? So, I'd be down for a Minecraft that ran better. I mean, because it's just all <laughs> Java you it's know, true. right now. So it's I'd true. be fine with you know, running a little bit better. But hmm. – Whatever, it's all good. Um, and then, of course, you know, with that, the Microsoft um, versions of the game are actually getting another update. They have, was it, it's um, the 1.64 update. Now they're saying it's going to add horses. Because horses have been in the PC version for a while, but you can actually get horses. Uh, you can even, you know, uh, make a donkey. You can put horse armor on them. Uh, all sorts of fun stuff. And tame them. 
And they're saying that uh, along with it, they're going to add um, new enemies, uh, bats, witches, wither skeletons, and new fireworks. So it's kind of it's getting close to where the Xbox version is actually meeting with you know almost what the PC version is right now. So um, I don't know. I have to go back to the Xbox version at some point, or uh, I may have to actually get one for the PlayStation Four in that version. All right. Um, the PlayStation Four version is pretty good, actually. A good time with that. All right, uh, moving on. Let's talk about you know. And honestly, I I have a hard time quantifying this next story as news because I really don't think this is news. But sometimes we have to bring to the discussion what other people are talking about out there in the gaming world, and that's where this next story falls into. Uh, Miyamoto, obviously, he did a big interview this week with ABC, and there was a lot that came out of this. And one other thing that he said in this interview, quote, we're focused on providing a robust lineup of Wii U software for next year. It seems like we've managed to do that this year, and people are very happy with what we've done on Wii U, which for the most part is pretty true. Uh, For the time being, our focus is on the Wii U hardware, but Nintendo as a whole has groups working on ideas for new hardware systems. While we're busy working on software for the Wii U, we have production lines that are working on ideas for what the next system might be. And so what's the headline on every fucking game blog right now and every fucking tweet out there? Nintendo working on Wii U successor because the little... What they don't say in that is that Everybody wants Nintendo to move on from the Wii U, so let's hear about their follow-up already. Click me, click me, click me, visit my site. Like that, I, I sort of think that's that sort of unsaid piece there, you mm-hmm. know, is that people, there's a lot of people that want to see Nintendo move on from the Wii U because they already wrote it off. And I got to say, though, Wii U has had a killer year, and I don't see how you can have a top five games of the year and not have at least one Wii U title on it. I mean... Maybe if you're talking about your own personal list and you don't own a Wii U, I guess that's the way you do it. But I can't see how you do. If you are considering every single game that came out this year, I don't see how you have a top five and you don't have at least one Wii U game on it. Like, they've, they've had a pretty good year in that regard. So I still give them some credit. Wii U's got a lot of life left in it. So if they don't bring out their next successor right away, then no big deal. But here's the thing. So that by itself... Not really a big deal. You know Sony's working on PlayStation 5. It's years and years away, but they're thinking about it. Xbox, working on Xbox 2 or whatever they're going to do next, right? 260, I don't know. Whatever the the hell Microsoft decides to do next. They're working on it. They're they're brainstorming that name right now. But (laughs) Brainstorm really hard. Here's the thing. Here's what else Miyamoto said that added – it did nothing but add fuel to the fire. Since we first created Mario, people have compared him to Mickey Mouse – I've always said Mickey Mouse evolved with each evolution in animation. You saw Mickey Mouse each step of the way. From early on, I wanted Mario to be that character in the digital world, so that with each digital evolution, he was there to usher in the next era. I think that maybe when we release the next hardware system, you can look forward to seeing Mario take on a new role or in a new game. And a lot of people are taking that to say, no more Mario until the next Nintendo system. But that's not really what I'm hearing in that quote. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just hearing in that Mario is kind of the, the, the guy with the scissors that cuts the ribbon that says, you know, it's now open for business. You know, not necessarily that every Nintendo console has launched right out the gate with a Nintendo title, but pretty close, right? Super Nintendo had one. Nintendo had one, at least here in America. Uh, Nintendo 64 had one. GameCube had Luigi, Luigi's Mansion. Which, you know, but Super Mario Sunshine wasn't that far from the get-go. Wii U had new Super Mario. The Wii is the only one I can think of that didn't have a Mario title right out the gate. But then you had some really strong Mario titles between uh, the new Super Mario Brothers and Mario Galaxy, of course. A lot of people really loved. So the new Paper Mario. I like the new Paper Mario. Yeah, right? But that's, that's the other thing, too, is that Mario is so much more all these other things now. And so I think there's some people that assume that this means there will be no Mario game on the Wii U. But I just, I can't imagine, I cannot imagine that Nintendo is not thinking about another game in the Mario Galaxy series. They have to be. Those games were so good. And they were so, like, different. Like, I just, and they were always critically lauded. I, I assume they sell, they sold well, right? Didn't they sell pretty good? I would think so, First yeah. one did, I'm pretty sure, and because they did make the sequel. They've got to be thinking of a Mario Galaxy for Wii U. I mean, 
or or even an, a pretty easy sequel to Mario 3D World, you would think, would be up on the agenda. I would think that would be a very – well, in some ways, Captain Toad might kind of be that, but I digress. So I would think there's going to be Mario Galaxy games. So I don't think this necessarily means that no more Mario until the next Can you Nintendo imagine an open-world Mario game done in the same <laughs> style as that new Zelda game? Right. That could be pretty awesome. I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, let's see. Going to our chat room over at live.vognetwork.com. Kaijudo says, Wii U is the shit. Anyone that hates on it has never really played it or owns it. The Wii U is an amazing system. Only haters are the people that want HD shooters and Mountain Dew perks. Fuck those guys. Uh, Tiger Glass says, There was no Star Fox game on the Wii, but we are getting one for the Wii U. So, yeah, Nintendo does skip some of their ideas sometimes. You know what else was sorely missing from the Wii? <clears throat> F Zero. <clears throat> uh, Act Def says Super Mario 3D World is still an amazing game, and I wouldn't mind a Super Mario 3D World too. Neither would I. I really kind of hope they do squeeze, and I'm okay with that. If they just try to squeeze another game out of that, I'm sure it'll be great. Uh, Nintendo, Nintendo does a really good job uh, producing quality sequels. Uh, YYR says Nintendo has always been stupid about sequels, though. Never more than one Smash game per platform, per example. Well, isn't it because those games take years and years and years for them to make? Um, and that team was busy doing the Kid Dicarus game on 3DS for a while. So that's why there was a big lull between uh, Smash Brothers games, if I'm not mistaken. Which I'm surprised they still haven't ported that over to, like, the Wii U. Or I'm something. kind of surprised, too. And I would think they just didn't do that well. They just probably yeah. don't think it's worth the effort. I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, because there is a lot of Kid Icarus love in uh, Smash Brothers. I mean, they made Palatina a character, which was a little bit unexpected. But I think the, the, the studio that's making Smash obviously is a little partial to their own games. There's also, you know, the fact that they have Kirby, Meta Knight, and DDD. I mean, that's, that's kind of a lot of Kirby in the game, which I'm sure Act, Act Deft is probably sitting there going, I don't see a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I, but I'm just saying in the big scope of things, I'm surprised gotten, they have a lot from I'm surprised these they haven't franchises. brought in um, like, you know, more Donkey Kong Country stuff like King Cruel or something like that. I'm really surprised from the Kid Icarus franchise that the Eggplant Wizard didn't show up as a character. I would have thought the Eggplant Wizard would have been an awesome character, and that's kind of one that's been missing for a while, but maybe there's only so much you can do with that. DLC. Yeah, you never know. Careful what you wish for, right, Rob? <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, let's get into something a little different with Dark Sakura. Well, we do have uh, a group. Um, are, you, are you familiar with the Electronic Frontier Foundation? Of course. Yes, they are uh, a very, very worthwhile uh, group. But they actually were celebrating National Crossword Day. Can I just say real quick, because uh, this, is, this is relevant and important, EFF, I definitely recognize them. They were one of the people fighting the podcast patent trolls. Yes. Remember the people that were tried to sue like Adam Kroll and stuff? The EFF played a big part of fighting that fight so that, you know, I can podcast and you can podcast without somebody trying to say that they're owed money because they invented feed technology. I mean, yeah. I don't I don't get what it. So anyway, the EFF was a huge part of that. Sorry, Jamie, but Well, anyway, I love them for that. um they have uh the crossword official crossword day has happened. And so they put out a digital crossword that you can download. That's very cool. Um, it's actually a PDF and I'm going to link it into our chat room. Um, or there's also an interactive version on uh, GitHub, but it's called 2014, the year in copyright news. So it's all copyright related stuff. So related back to 2014. So thought I would share that with our listeners. It's a very old school game talking about some new school ideas. Yep. If you think about it, Crossword, that's it's one of the oldest video, not video games, just the oldest games we have. Mm -hmm. You know, before there were video games, I used to love, and they still make these books. And once in a while, about once a year, I will still buy one of these books to play on the airplane, like while I'm flying across country or something. And that is the, what is it called? Variety Puzzles and Games. Have you seen these books? They're like oh, Penny yeah. Press or something. You know, they have all the, the logic problems and crosswords and all this stuff. I'm sure somebody in chat has to know what I'm talking about. That's like gaming without a console for me. That's, that kind of leads into. They still do your crossword in the paper every Sunday, so. Yeah. Well, yeah. every time I try to do the crossword on a flight or something, somebody else has already done it. Jerks. So you in ink. In ink. Bring your own. I don't want to bring my own. I wanted the complimentary one. <laughs> Jeez, Rob, cheapo. <laughs> well, thank you, EFF, for uh, providing uh, a different crossword with a message. Yes. With a message. Uh, Loki. 
All right. So there's um, apparently a new project that Microsoft is working <laughs> on called Arcadia. And it's thought to be a game streaming um, technology or service. The, by the sounds of it, um, and this is, I guess, coming from some job openings that they have, one for a, a cloud-based operating systems group and one for listing it says a project called Arcadia. And they're saying that, I guess, it's similar to, uh, I guess it's built off of the Azure cloud and something that's supposed to replace Microsoft's Rio game streaming tech. It, to me, it sounds a lot like technology that you would see with like um, the PlayStation streaming to uh, you know like the share not the share play but like streaming to like the Vita that type of stuff and that's what they're saying. It's like the listing. They said the new operating systems group o- OSG streaming team is leveraging the cloud to bring premium, unique experiences to Microsoft's core platforms. These experiences will take advantage of the new geo distributed massive scaling service to redefine what is possible by today's services or today's devices. The client team is building the user interface applications or user facing applications of bridging the service and uh, devices together seamlessly. Our team is small, but growing and dedicated to solving Microsoft's one biggest challenge in the creative fashion. So they're saying that also, um, you know, possibly going to be streaming to not only like Microsoft devices, but iOS and Android, uh, that type of stuff. So, it makes sense. I think it'd be kind of cool if they did something like that. Um, you know, it seems to work. It's working out pretty well with um, you know PlayStation right now, and I know that it hasn't quite gotten to the point where they can do it on. Well, actually, I take that back. It has kind of gotten to the point where they can do that on Android devices because I remember I saw that hack last week that they somehow got that working now, where you can play um, your PlayStation Four games on your Android tablets and stuff. So cool. Hey, if I can find a way to game on the go. You know, and it works well over Wi-Fi. I'm all down with for that. Ever since Sony announced like PlayStation Now and SharePlay, I've been curious how Microsoft's going to respond. Honestly, what I would like, and this is cool, you know, that you can do it on a mobile device. But I would like to be able to do that on my laptop. I would think that there would be a way they're going to stream it to PCs because you know Microsoft does have that Windows tie-in. Can you imagine if you could stream your Xbox One console to a PC? That would be uh, that would be really neat. That would be fun. Because I would just take my laptop with me. Yeah. And Sony, I'd love to do the same thing. All my systems. I'll just, I'll just have them plugged in and <laughs> I just play them on my laptop. I'm down with that. Doesn't mean you'll be able to use a keyboard and mouse with everything. but uh, uh, I don't want to, but you know, I'm I'm fine with using just the controllers. Yeah. But that would be really neat if that you know you have the Xbox One in the living room and you could just stream stuff to your PC desktop and you can play the game, you know, using an Xbox One controller plugged into your PC or something. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, anyhow, maybe one game that you are streaming and still playing is Destiny. I see a lot of people actually streaming this on Twitch. I still haven't played my copy yet. Well, you should get on that. I need to. Um, yeah, you know, get on it because a lot of people I knew that were playing it kind of stopped. And if you want me to play, I'll still sign in and play with you. Uh, uh, just, it's it's one of those things like, you know, because especially once we get into the game jam stuff, it's like yeah. I haven't really been. You get like, to it eventually. Like, I've been playing. The only reason I've been playing games at all is because I'm playing while my son's still awake. It's not when I have free time or anything you can work on my own stuff um so i haven't really been playing when you know he's going to sleep but Mm. we'll see well anyhow uh destiny had a little minor patch this week and uh the patch has to do with the expansion the dark below which uh i i'm not gonna buy until they slash the price which i know it's inevitable they'll slash the price of this because i i kind of don't think everybody bought it i mean i don't know maybe some sales numbers will come out and prove me wrong but i know a lot of people that have either sold the game back or like i'm not buying this because there's not enough there so very curious to see how that's going to affect things. But anyway, a patch did come out that is going to tweak some of the gear drop rates with Crota's End, which is the Dark Below's raid. And more players will get equipment with their efforts. Uh, so now raid gear in Crota's End starts at level 30, and this will help you on an upgrade path to level 32. There's also a specific helmet item, and it will also spawn on normal no- mode now, and hard mode players have an additional chance of getting it as a drop. Uh, there's also some issues regarding reputation gains, hive shield functionality, pocket infinity, charging all that addressed in a destiny update uh that went live this week so you know despite the fact that i might feel a little more meh on destiny now than when it first launched at least props to bungie for staying on top of it and doing regular updates with the game but i i still am not a big fan of the fact that the raid content kind of or the the new expansion content kind of gates some old things 
like, you know, the rate of the week is only in the expansion. So it's kind of like if you don't pay the $10, you can't do the same stuff that you were necessarily doing before. A little little silly to me, and I hope they uh, I hope they consider some fixes with that. If they haven't already, to be honest, I, I haven't put the game in and played in a while. Maybe I will this week, or if Loki ever tells me, hey, get on and play Destiny, help me. Dark Saga. Well, we keep hearing about 38 Studios, the, the group in uh, Rhode Island that didn't quite make it and pissed off the entire state. I thought, I really thought all that news was done with. I thought we were past that now. I guess not, huh? Well, it turned out that 38, the, uh, 38 Studios board member uh, fined for un, well, was getting fined for unregistered lobbying in Rhode Island. Um, that actually, uh, it was, uh, there's a hearing, um, out there that says that, uh, Thomas Zacagnino lobbied state officials and, uh, different politicians about, uh, the company and, uh, but he wasn't a registered lobbyist with the secretary of state. Um, but that lobbying is what led to the loan that funded the company. So, uh, dude's going to get fined $2,000 if he doesn't fill in the proper reports. <laughs> so, nope. We haven't heard the last of them. File your report or else. Or how about lobbying is stupid? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on. We're going to travel around the world and check out some release dates and check out some things coming to a store near you. Although I think this segment might be a little empty this week. I don't know. Loki, is there anything in the U S it is that time of year. There is nothing coming out. Um, yeah, unfortunately there, there is nothing coming up this week. I mean, Tuesday in the States is what Christmas Eve Eve as my sister calls it. So yeah, there's not really, I mean, they don't normally put anything out around this time and even gets, it's pretty dead up until March. Um, I, the only thing I could say is if you have, you know, your games with gold or if you've got you know, PlayStation plus, don't forget to download the free games. I know right now, uh, starting on the 16th, they had SSX on Xbox. Um, so I reminded myself today to go download that even if I may not play it or not, I still have like money I got to spend on there. And I just haven't, I honestly haven't been touching my Xbox in a long time. So I just have to figure out what I'm going to buy for it. Um, I'm hoping, hope I'll get an Xbox one at some point and I can just buy a digital game on that or something. But yeah, it's just unfortunately not a lot coming out until January. All right. Well, Japan being a different culture has a different pattern with their releases. And so we are seeing some releases in Japan this week. In fact, on the 25th of December, we have on the PlayStation 4, Laura Croft and the Temple of Osiris uh, comes out on the PlayStation 4. And Shadow of Mordor, Middle Earth comes out, uh, the Japanese version, on the PlayStation 4 this week on the 25th. Shadow of Mordor also making its way to the Xbox One in Japan this week. Uh, looking at the last gen consoles, PlayStation 3, hey, guess what? Shadow of Mordor, all also on the PlayStation 3 this week and uh, on the Wii U, uh, nothing this week. Wii U is not getting anything until Captain C Toad Treasure Tracker next year. Uh, I didn't realize that game was not out in Japan. Oh, never mind, because that's the Europe date, not the J Japan date. Oops. So, uh, gosh, Japan doesn't get a Wii U game until Lego Marvel Super Heroes on January 22nd. Which, which they should totally download or buy. Which uh, is also, well, it's going to go up against on the same day Kirby Super Rainbow. Uh, which is the Kirby Touch uh, Wii U game, uh, is on the 22nd in Japan. Uh, let's quickly check the Vita and the 3DS. Uh, there is one game on the Vita this week. Uh, Mahuka Koku no Retose Out of Order uh, comes out this week. That's from Bandai Namco. And lastly, on the 3DS this week, uh, Atelier Deco La Doll Collection. Uh, it looks like another title in the... At Atla I would say in the Atlayer series, but I don't think that is what this is at all. This is just a doll dress-up game uh, coming out. On th it's it's the it's those doll. What Jamie? What do they call these dolls with the uh, giant eyes that look like that one Lady Gaga video? Oh, the pulips. Yeah. Or the Blythe, or is it pulips? I think the pulips. Yeah, that looks like a pulip. So. It looks like that kind of little dress-up game there. Dress-up and decoration on the 3DS. I'm sure all of you are pre-ordering it right now. How about Europe, Dark Sakura? Not a damn thing. Um, it, like, gave me some games, but didn't say when, so I'm just going to throw off a few of them. Sure. Cosmic Star Heroine, uh, Duelist, Habitat, uh, The Girl and the Robot, some other stuff. 
Um, those are probably games that were announced for this year, but never dated. So I'm yeah. thinking that's probably what it is. We'll see. I'm going to put file that under bullshit. <laughs> so yeah, nothing. No games for you guys in the UK. Sorry. You don't get to play anything. I'm sorry. Catch up on your backlog. Shit. Get a spectrum. <laughs> uh, just a couple more stories for you guys. Speaking of the spectrum, just a couple more stories in the classic game of the week. Loki. All right. So, um, <laughs> You know, I think we talked about this a while back. You know how the whole uh, debate regarding, you know, 1080p and upscale 1080p and the whole, you know, oh, this game's not really 1080p. It's like 900p or whatever. And Yes, then, I do remember this debate. You remember there was this lawsuit or it was a class action lawsuit against Killzone Shadowfall. Um, and they were saying that, you know, it was false advertising because it wasn't a native, you know, 1080p. And so... Apparently, um, the federal judge has ruled, um, I guess, that a lot of the complaints have been dismissed. Um, So there is only still one left, I guess. And I'm trying to see here. I believe it was that they're saying, um, let's see here. It was something I think that still has to do with um, the native or razor sharp 1080p native resolution is false advertising. Um, and they're claiming that it was blurry to the point of distraction, which honestly, you know, looking at the screenshots and video I've seen of Killzone, it looked pretty good. I just don't understand why people would be complaining about that game. There's plenty of other games that look like crap. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, uh, all but one argument, um, basically that shouldn't agree that was it the negligent misrepresentation claim cannot stand in its current state. As Lador did not present a non-economic loss such as personal injury or property damage. Yes, he caused property damage because of the the, the, the lack of pixels burned my house down. <laughs> uh, yes, and so you know because of that, you know they granted them thirty days to file an amendment complaint. In which case, they say um, they can su- sufficiently allege that he or other punitive class members suffered such non-economic damages. I just. I the whole thing just seemed to be kind of a grab for money in the first place. I just don't see this. I'd be surprised if that last bit doesn't get dismissed, or if it does go to court, that they still don't win. I mean, because I think they're just kind of stretching at this point, trying to. I don't know if it ever says it's native 1080p anywhere and on like any of the advertising. Hey, Murica. <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, all right. I got a story about a a series that I know a lot of you like. I like this series an awful lot. It's pretty much all I use my 3DS for now that uh, Smash Brothers is on Wii U. And that game is Theatrhythm. And guess what? Theatrhythm Dragon Quest is going to be a thing. Uh, It was shown at Jump Festa 2015, which was a big uh, Square Enix festival that's going on right now. Uh, We have some other stories about what came out of Jump Festa a little later on in the show. But uh, yeah, Theatrhythm Dragon Quest is going to be a thing. Uh, Who knows if it'll actually come out here in uh, America. That's the big question right now but dragon quest theater them will come out in japan on march 26th of next year Uh, again no western release yet confirmed for the game if they're gonna do it i would imagine they'd announce it at e3 for a holiday release kind of like what they did with curtain call i don't know if this would be the type of thing that might be download only because i mean unfortunately over here dragon quest is a little more niche uh especially when you consider that there's probably going to be songs from dragon quest 10 in it which wasn't even released here so i don't know But anyway, there still will be field and event music stages uh, that are in the game. Uh, There will also be apparently a top-down rock band type setup that will take the four-lane battle layout uh, that was found in the previous Theatrhythm games and turn it into something a little different there. Uh, So again, March 26, 2015 uh, is the big day for that in Japan. I'm sure some people will uh, be importing that. Uh, also good news for Japanese owners of Theater the Final Fantasy Curtain Call. Uh, some more DLC was confirmed for Final Fantasy Curtain Call. Now, there was some stuff that you would expect in this game, such as the Ultima battle music from Final Fantasy XIV, which is really good, by the way. Hard to miss uh, as well will be coming out. Uh, but those songs are going to be free for two weeks when they come out in Japan, so that's pretty cool. But also, get this, the opening titles and passionate rhythm from Romancing Saga... And Romancing Saga 2. Saga Frontier will be getting a song in the game. The Meridian Dance from Secret of Mana is going to be in Theatrhythm Curtain Call. And Chrono Trigger 
is getting a song in Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy, which Yay. many people were saying Chrono Trigger should just get its own damn Theater Rhythm game. Uh, but, you know, it's been so long. I don't know. I don't know if that'll happen. But uh, no announcement yet if those songs will make their way over to the U.S. I sure hope so. Uh, I think a lot of people would really dig uh, some of these songs um, in America. But um, we shall see. What do we got to do for, like, DLC for Mario Kart 8 that's Chocobo Racing? I mean, <laughs> right? What do we have to do for that? I mean, oh, my gosh. That'd be amazing. Or, oh hell, just make a racing game. Shit, it can't be that expensive. They have the fucking Sanrio games that come out hey, that hey. aren't that great. Chocobo Racing is coming to Final Fantasy fourteen. With the chocobo breeding, yeah, but it's not chocobo cart racing. I know, I, I understand not that. There's... But you are, you know, you're actually going to get to control your chocobo, though. They say so. That's it. It, it has. It's probably. It's not going to be as robust as something like Mario Kart. There 8, should but... really, there should really be like a whole Derby Owners Club type game, right? Before, like Final Fantasy, where you're just sitting there and like I'm, I, look, I, on them. I know I'm sounding fanboy, and you know what? Sometimes I just can't help it. Uh, with, you made Paul Terry cry with, with Final Fantasy 14. The fact that they're bringing Triple Triad into the game. And Chrono, or and yes, they're bringing Chrono Trigger into Final Fantasy XIV. No, they're not. No, they're that not. It's not canon if and it Chocobo comes Racing. in there, but can they get like the Golden Saucer up in there? That, and that's that's what it is. It's coming in the next patch. Oh, nice. It's called the Manderville Gold Saucer. Is coming in the two point five patch before the expansion. Can we get cloud snowboarding and stuff. In there as well? <laughs> More fucking Hilda, whatever the fuck is. They haven't said if it's part of the Hildebrand quest or not. The, the I, uh, I I don't hate know if it was, him. I don't know if it's. I love him. You're you're a hater. I, know I it, am a hater because he's stupid. <laughs> I don't know if it was. I Alan. like his dad though. Well, I don't know if it was Alan or Shane that suggested this. I think it was Alan that said this that that it could be that his no no it was Shane because I think we we're talking on Skype. It could be his dad that owns the gold saucer or his mom. Cause the man or um, his mom has not been seen in the story. Hiddlebrand's mom. So she could be the one that runs the gold saucer. So we'll see. She probably got smart and left him. <laughs> so what was the new, uh, the new jobs that they added for 14? They announced and funny, this didn't make our show roll, but yes, they announced three new jobs for Final Fantasy 14. That will be in the expansion. Dark Knight, which is a new tank class. It was not a tank in 11, but it will be a tank mm -hmm. class now. They announced Astrologist, which is the new healer class. Um, machinist. And Machinist uh, oh. from, uh, is going to be the DPS I, class. I want to play an Aura. And the and the Aura is the new race, which is it's, it's new to Final Fantasy. They look like Draenei, but just not blue. So what's a machinist? Is that like, you know, they build mechs and stuff? Because I mean, that'd be pretty bad. Do you they have guns and... Do you remember... Um, Edgar and Final Fantasy. Oh, yeah. fuck. No, why? Why didn't it tell me this? That sounds so awesome. God damn. They're going to actually use little drones, too. They oh, actually, yeah. man. It looks awesome. It's kind of like the engineer class. I hate that. And Come why? to the dark side. No. Come Do to the, the thing. dark side. Do it. Do it. Do the thing. Sorry, Nelly. All right. That means that I'm I, I, I'm not gonna remake Mulan, but I'm probably gonna oh, do man. a second character. For, uh, Edgar's Aura. like seriously my favorite character from like pretty much all the entire series. They have the most badass they, weapons. In this it. this is why Final Fantasy XIV is doing so awesome, and why the game continues to be awesome. The reason why is they know that. And they're acknowledging that, Loki. They know that people love Edgar, and that's why they're making Machinist a, a class in the game. Just for the same reason they made a fucking Magitek armor something that you can actually get in the game and ride around on. Like, it's that same type of stuff. I, I, I wouldn't doubt at some point they'll put the fucking Opera House from Final Fantasy VI somehow in the game. They already Hell, have Ultros. They have Ultros. With the old school battle music in the game, so that's awesome. You know what? That's that's why the game is doing so I'm well. I'm on that they quest line right now. They know what people like. I'm on that, that quest fight. Line. Is kind of a bitch. It's harder than the Shiva fight. That's why I'm think. only going to do it with my friends, so that you can teach me the mechanics before <laughs> I try it. You get turned into an imp, and you have to imp punch the other guy uh, when pretty... he before he does his thing. Anyway. All right. Uh, Can you imp punch him in his imp junk? <laughs> yes. Uh, SSG100 Matt in our chat over at live.vognetwork.com says, Nellie can't hear you, Rob. She's pouring sand in your car's gas tank. <laughs> Probably. All right. You know what? Let's let's travel back to a time when games were a lot simpler. You know, they, they weren't as self-referential. Although this game might have been a little bit. I don't know. It's the classic game of the week where Dark Soccer is going to go into the vault and find a game that she thinks, hey... You know what? It's just, since there's no games coming out in the U.S. or Europe this week, you go fucking play this game. You do the thing. Do it. Do the thing. You get Loki resub or you get Loki sub to Final Fantasy XIV, and then you play this. 
Dark yes. Sa- <laughs> Dark Sakura, what if is... If you make your character, by the way, it should be called Loki Tingle. <laughs> <laughs> no, that will never happen. I, I will just name my... Ki- I'll name him... Uh, just after what I had in my other class. All right. Okay. Here so- it is, your classic game of the week, Dark Sakura. I love, love, love this game, and I'm so excited. It's I'd- finally a fucking classic game of the week. I picked a game that came out the year I graduated high school. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you insist? Is that your new thing? You're going to come out here and go, I picked this game because it's now officially 10 years old and so are you. And- uh, no, Rob, this is more than 10 years old. Uh, this is 20 years old. All right. I have my, remember, I skipped my 20th high school reunion. To play this game. Oh, and the oven's preheated, so we got. I better do this quick because latkes. All right, here. Oh, it's, yeah. Here it is. What Point is Blank, movie? also known as Gun Bullet. I love that game. Um, or it's also been nicknamed um, Ganvari. Um, anyway, uh, it came out by Namco uh, in the arcade PlayStation. It's got a version on the DS. Um, but it first came out in 1994 um, for the arcade, and it is the first light gun game that Namco has ever done. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a fucking light gun game. But you have different types of uh, quests that you have in there, different puzzles. Um, like the one on the video that I'm linking here is actually one of the harder ones where it's a cutout shoot that you, you know, go down a hall and you have to shoot all the bad guys and none of the, the civilians. Um, you got ones where you shoot different targets on, uh, of a color. You get uh, different... Uh, shoot all the balls. Yes. Shoot, shoot the balls. Look. You shoot, shoot the, the balls. Shoot the balls, Star Soccer. And it's like... Um, Oh, Buster Brothers, the way that the balls work. You know, where you, it's, you yes. shoot them and they get smaller as that they go. That so easy to make in Unity. It's not even funny. Um, this game is so fucking good. I can't. I and can't. you have Sorry, to also Dark protect Dr. Dawn and Dr. Dan. You have other challenges, um, some things that have in common with, like, police trainer. Uh, different uh, difficulty levels, you have practice, beginner, advanced, and very hard. Because some people like it very hard. Um, that uh, determine how many stages that you have to finish to complete the game, as well as their difficulty. And then you get four missions in uh, each of those types of groups. So you can do you know, different ones in different orders. So you lose your lives by failing to complete your quota within your time limit, or shooting a bomb, or letting Dr. Don or Dr. Dan die when you have to protect them. Incorrectly answering questions by shooting the wrong answers, shooting a cardboard civilian, shooting a cardboard geisha. Uh, shooting uh, the opponent's targets, having less points after you finish a stage, failing to complete a quota um, for you know multiple life things, letting meteors destroy the earth because that's always a day ruiner, um, running out of bullets, shooting incorrect differences, letting aliens steal your shot, and more. Um, so the things that you're uh, gauged on is accuracy, intelligence, memory, simulation, visual acuity, and speed. So, as far as the games that have come out in this series, we have uh, Point Blank, the first one, 1994, or Gun Bullet, as it's called. Point Blank 2, um, which came out as uh, Ganbari. Um, Ghoul Panic, or O um, Bakun, uh, which was a haunted house theme in 3D graphics instead of the 2D. Yes, the cat bug level. Yes, the cat bug level. <laughs> Point Blank 3, or Gumbelina. Um, and point blank, D, uh, point blank DS, which was a uh, Uno no Tatsujin gun bullet trainer. Um, but yeah, it actually, like I said, it was an arcade release, but then it came out on the PlayStation, uh, which I've got versions of this that I cannot play because we can't use light guns on modern TVs. Um, and the PlayStation had um, the arcade mode included, but it also had like an RPG mode, and then it was recreated in Point Blank 2. And then, um, so basically the very last iteration that came out was in 2006 with, uh, gun, uh, sorry, Point Blank DS, or as I said, Uno no Tatsujin Gun Bullet Trainer. There you go. All right. There it is, your classic game of the week. I really love this game. Point Blank. Uh, available, uh, in the arcades. So, you know, on main cabinets everywhere or uh, the more ethical way of on the PlayStation, even though you're going to have to get an old TV to play it on. Because that uh, reminds me, I'm like, where the hell are my gun guns? I wish I wish they'd bring this back. Here's what you can do with the Morpheus. (laughs) 
<laughs> That's why I want them with the Morpheus Sony. You don't have to do another Morpheus. The move controllers. They had the gun controllers. Oh, yeah. That, and they had you know, Time Crisis. They had the Toy Story game on uh, Wii, yeah. and, which is a very similar type of thing. Yeah. And, well, they also have it on the, the PlayStation 3. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, sure um, yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. Come on, Namco. It's been a t- it's been a long time. All right. Hell, just bring it to... I don't. Well, I don't know if they could do it on Virtual Console, but that would be awesome on Virtual Console. Point blank is the reason the CRT should never truly die. Uh, YYR wants to point out, uh, shameless plug, my game Sharpshooter on Xbox Live Indie Games is basically point blank using the analog stick instead of a gun. Also crappy graphics, but the gameplay is there. Hey, you know what? YYR kind of planted the seed that led to this whole game jam idea that uh, we're going to get into tonight. So um, I have no problem plugging his stuff. Uh, YYR. Pluggity plug. YYR is doing the Lord's work, in my opinion, <laughs> between bungee ferret tossing and pixel shits. So you know what? Plug away. Plug away. Yes. All right. Uh, let's take a break. We're going to uh, take a quick break, guys. Uh, but when we come back, there is plenty more Orange Lounge Radio, including the list tonight, guys. The OLR and Bobby Blackwolf and other shows on the network are going to be teaming up to prevent, to prevent, to present, not prevent. <laughs> if we pick the wrong theme, it might prevent it. But we are going to present the VOG game jam and that is kicking off tonight and i know some of you have your unity windows up ready to go you just need to know the theme so we are going to pick that theme when we come back after a break with more of orange lounge radio Welcome back, everybody, to Orange Lounge Radio live on this Sunday evening, December the 21st of 2014, episode number 580 of our show, already in progress, and a very happy whatever it is you celebrate this December to you. It's Hanukkah. Yeah. (laughs) Right now. It's Hanukkah. It is Hanukkah right now, but this week also sees, you know, Christmas, which is kind of a big deal to some people. Kwanzaa. What else? Is, uh, Is Festivus this week? When's Festivus? I don't know. And Ramadan? I don't know. Like that. the pole. Ramadan's anyway. in the middle of the year, Rob. Which one's, which, what's the, what, what's the other holiday I'm thinking of this, this time of year? There's solstice for some people. Saturnalia. Which is today, I believe. What's the other big one this it's winter? This is the solstice, Yule. Yeah, Yule. Um, Hanukkah going on, Kwanzaa going on. Boxing Day. That's Boxing the day, day in after Canada. Christmas. <laughs> it's like Black Friday in Canada. So. But instead of trying to kill each other, they all push each other and apologize. Oh, sorry. 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 (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Try to get that crock pot. Sorry. All right. Anyway, Uh, let's let's move on and uh, try to get into uh, some more uh, gaming news. And we're going to start off with some rapid fire news. Loki. So this is kind of cool. I mean, even though we don't technically have our first, you know, female character in like a Grand Theft Auto type of game, unless you can count Grand Theft Auto Online, uh, now Payday 2 is getting its first female uh, gang member in some new DLC. Uh, her pseudonym is Clover, and I guess she's joining uh, joining in on the high scene. Uh, also, they're going to have a unique weapon called the Shalele weapon. And um, uh, the Shalele. So she's is she Irish? She is Irish. Ah. And uh, there's also a new mission, I guess, called the Diamond Heist. Well, they'll try to swipe, or I guess you try to swipe the world's most famous diamond from a heavily guarded museum. Um, so the Diamond Heist DLC that would be seven dollars, and then um, I guess uh, five dollars for the character pack. So that's pretty cool. Um, she definitely looks, you know, like she'd fit right in with Grand Theft Auto or you know Payday Two. So I gotta check out Payday Two. I've got Payday One. I got it free when they had it on there for a little bit. I miss chocolate paydays. Those were delicious. <laughs> um, and then of course, speaking of Grand Theft Auto, um, Grand Theft Auto Five. You know, they kind of do stuff for the holidays every now and then. Um, I haven't played my game recently yet, but um, I know they're gonna have snow in the Los Santos so you can check that out but they also have festive surprise update which is going to add you know a lot of Christmas and holiday theme things including um, they've got you know brand new weapons uh, also you can get Christmas sweaters hats scarves they had a mask that looks like a gingerbread man that's kind of creepy a penguin mask 
Um, they're also going to have some New Year's um, stuff, including a fireworks launcher, fireworks rocket ammo again, just like uh, they did last year. Uh, hot rod, uh, Christmas rat loader, slam van, and um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, proxy mines and a homing missile launcher were added to the game as well. And of course, all that's free, so you know, go check it out. Um, and to go with that, you know, they've been heists have been promised for Grand Theft Online for ever now. It was supposed to have been out, you know, around the time that Grand Theft Auto Online launched, since it was one of the things they were kind of hinting about. And this week they had a new trailer for Heist that are going to be coming early 2015. And it uh, looks pretty awesome. Um, you know, definitely going to they even kind of poke fun at it a little bit. Um, and they're talking about kind of a little bit of a delay. But it's showing off different types of uh, missions that can go on, you know, and uh, breaking people out of jail and you know, all sorts of bank heists and that kind of stuff. So looks pretty cool. Should be coming to all platforms um, early next year. So hopefully sooner than later. All right. And then uh, let's see here. Last but not least, uh, more DLC for little big planet three. Um, all right. I guess it would be for everything. Cause you know, I think those uh, characters are interchangeable, but they're going to have frozen characters uh, making their way to Little Big Planet. Um, oh, hooray. So, yes, now you'll be able to have Elsa, Anna, Sven, Kristoff, and Marshmallow in the Medicine Man skins, which uh, can be purchased for $1.99 a piece or in the whole costume pack, which would include the ex- exclusive Olaf skin for five ninety nine. And they're going to be releasing a winter creator kit for free to go along with that. So Look, can- I, I love Disney, and I'm sure this is fine. I have not seen Frozen. I don't know how the fuck I never saw it. I just I so rarely get out to movies anymore. I just never saw Frozen. But like the more and more overexposed Frozen gets, the less and less <laughs> I want to see the damn movie. Because I'm just like, stop! There's like an entire archive of Disney everything, and it's still everything frozen. Like half of Disneyland is Frozen Town Why right now. Why can't it be all like, Let it go. you know, I don't know, Wreck-It Ralph or you right? know, Big Hero 6? Or... Right. Yes, exactly. Exactly. All right, anyhow. Uh, there is more news coming out of the Jump Festa uh, Festival over in Japan, including a new trailer for Final Fantasy XV uh, that showed up. Uh, I'm very excited about this game, even though I got to admit, seeing the English voice acting in the game, I'm a little bit worried because <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't exactly the, the best, but uh, well, it was better than Destiny's. So uh, we'll see. Uh, so this game will be coming out. Uh, it looks I'm assuming they're trying to make it for holiday next year, especially with the demo coming out. So we'll see if it makes it. But uh, other notable things in the trailer, they showed a Titan summon in the trailer, and it looked amazing. He was gigantic, and uh, it looked he was about to step on one of the guys that was pretty cool and they revealed that uh they're gonna have sid in the game of course but this time sid is a woman named sydney and uh sydney is uh, an engineer and uh she has a bit of an accent and she introduces herself as sydney so uh i'm sure they call her sid for short so uh why not why not uh anyhow they also have announced not square but uh, nintendo has announced that duck hunt will be coming out to the wii u virtual console we talked about that a while ago no i i I think that news just came out this week that it's officially coming out to the virtual console it's dated now it's for oh they have the date now yeah the date's out now it's yeah christmas day now it's that during when they're talking about uh smash they were they mentioned Uh. duck hunt but well, I don't think they had a date yet. Well, now it has a date. So it's uh, December 25th is uh, the day that is coming out. Uh, I have no idea how that is going to work with the light gun. I'm assuming it's using the Wiimote as the controller. Yeah. Uh, maybe tapping the gamepad would be kind of cool too, but I, I doubt it. So uh, neat. Don't forget, there's also the whole uh, – many people remember the duck hunt part, but it's also the clay pigeon shooter thing they have in there too, which was the original game that the whole thing was based on. But anyway, uh, also coming out on the 25th of uh, this month, uh, the same day, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse is finally coming to the Wii U. And I know some people have been awaiting this game. Uh, It's been out on the 3DS for a little bit, but of course, uh, the Wii U version will have HD character portraits, uh, off-TV play, classic controller pro, and Wii U pro controller support, and a new soundtrack by Vert. And he's a very talented individual, so I'm sure a lot of people will be checking out Shantae and hopefully enough people buy this game so that the Nintendo eShop can say, Shantae, you stay. 
All right, and one more little quick announcement here about Killer Instinct. Uh, of course, the free-to-play fighting game on the Xbox. Uh, Riptor is making its way to Killer Instinct this week. And uh, December 17th was the day that Riptor hit the game. I guess that was a little bit earlier or whatever. Um, anyhow, the new design is similar to the old design for Riptor. Uh, but, uh, yep, there you go. Some extra little uh, new high-definition features on Riptor. Um, a game which I will certainly check out whenever I finally get around to getting an Xbox One. I thought I would buy it. This holiday, but uh, sadly didn't uh, didn't get one in time for the big holiday. All right, Dar Sakura, what do you have for us? Rescued the latkes. That's right. Um, so they we look ha- well done over there. They That's, are done. They, they have to cool off a little bit. D U N. All right. Well, um, first of all, for the holidays, there are some freebies going on, and uh, some happiness to be had. Uh, so first of all, the uh, there's a, a game called Enter the Gungeon and Fork Parker's Holiday Profit Hike. They are both free on Steam right now. Um, and especially in the Fork Parker game, um, you get features like snow, helicopter, dope beats, ethics, reverse monetization, hot tubs failing or no falling, and ropes. So there you go. Next up, uh, Capcom, though, is going to be delisting uh Marvel versus Capcom Origins very soon. So get it while you can. It's going to be taken off the PlayStation Network on December 23rd and Xbox Live Arcade on December 31st. Get it while you can. Right now it's 15 bucks. Um and then last but not least Half Brick uh Studios is giving away every game in its iOS ca- uh, catalog for free right now. That's including Fruit Ninja, Jetpack Joyride, out of Water, Monster Dash, Age of Zombies, Season 2, Band Stars, Colossatron, Massive World, Brizzle Fever, Yes Chef, and Top Farm. Freebies. Get them. I like free things. I do too. All right. Uh, bummer about those games getting delisted, but I guess it makes sense with all the licensing and so forth. Well, one thing we don't plan on delisting from this show anytime soon is the chance for you guys to have your say in a segment we call the Fugal Question of the Week. (laughs) You take the words Facebook and Google Plus and slam them together and you get Fugal. And uh, we're going to ask our community a question as we do every week. And this week has to do with the Video Game Jam. Uh, that we are starting tonight. The Video Game Jam kicking off tonight. Uh, We want all of our awesome listeners to create something, damn it. And so we're asking you, what should the theme be? So I don't think Loki's finished his list yet, and I don't think Dark Sakura's finished her list yet. Finished, started, you know, same thing. All right. And and Bobby Bobby, Bobby hasn't finished his list yet. Uh, I don't know, or maybe he has. So we want you guys to have your say uh, on what should be on the list. So here it is, some of the answers from Facebook. We have uh, some answers here on Facebook, such as Hitstun, who says three colors should be the theme. And Hitstun wants to remind us that uh, food and rotation are also things that were submitted on the comments to last week's episode. I believe boobs was also submitted twice as the theme. So you got three colors. That's appropriate. Food and rotation. You know why I like three colors? Because it reminds me of the old school computer monitors. Although I think technically that was CMYK. I think were the colors that it could do. Oh, black is technically not a color. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Milton H. says theater. Theater should be the theme. All right. We'll see. We'll see. Fifth Dream suggesting unicorns. I think I brought that one up earlier in the show. Unicorns. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. And Rageinator. In typical Rageinator suggestion, says either explosive projectile diarrhea or ginger pubes. Oh, Rageinator. <laughs> and uh, we only have one answer, one lone answer over on Google Plus, but it's at Deft suggesting, and I like this one. How about hats? <laughs> well, how about hats? How about hats? All right. There it is. Uh, some of the suggestions from you guys, and we'll see. We will see what makes the list here in just a little bit. But we have a few more stories for you guys before we get to that list list. Loki. All right. So let's talk a little bit about. Um, let's see here. Steam. Um, 
so the Steam controller still not out yet, um, but it's been going undergoing several revisions, and the newest revision of the Steam controller actually kind of is unveiled based off of um, an image that was in the Steam client beta, and it shows now where um, the you know how they kind of had those like crazy circle. Um, touchpad things that were the analog sticks. Well, you may remember last time that they added actually an analog stick to the controller. Now there's a D-pad where one of those circle pads is. Um, or I guess it's still part of the circle pad, but there's like some sort of D-pad cross mark on it. So, I don't know. It's more and more becoming like an Xbox 360 controller. <laughs> As time progresses, it's just slowly evolving to like an Xbox, you know, controller or you know, like a Wii U Pro controller or something. But uh, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, you know, what that looks like when it's actually released. Hell, it'll be interesting to see what these scene boxes look like when they're actually released. But yeah, won't it, won't it have been a year since they were announced? When we finally get around has to it only the CES, been, has it only been a year? I think CES was when they announced it, wasn't it? Is a production of is it? Whoa! Studios. Why is our outro playing? Sorry about that. It's not over yet. Don't try to don't try to take us off the air. Be quiet, Jason. <laughs> My fault. Sorry. Um. So I yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I, I I'm surprised it's only been a year, but it's taking taking a long time. I guess. I don't know. All right. Definitely less excited about like them kind of taking over as like a console, though. You know, they kind of the buzz is kind of dropped off completely. I think I don't know. All right. Uh, one more story for you guys, and this has to do with uh, World of Warcraft, which uh, I've been playing a little bit thanks to the new expansion. And uh, some updates were finally posted this week. I was curious when they were going to finally talk about what their first major patch will have for uh, Warlords of Draenor, and they finally talked a little bit about that. But, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter what else the notes said because... Uh, a lot of people very interested in one of these points that was on the blue post that was made about this, about potentially adding a subscription currency. Um, and they, they're comparing this to the Plex currency in EVE Online. And what would happen is that you could buy and sell game time tokens for in-game gold. Uh, saying, quote, our current thought on this is that it would give players a way to use their surplus gold to cover some of their subscription cost while giving players who might have less playtime an option for acquiring gold from other players through a legit and secure system. So this is going to cause a lot of people to perk up when the world's biggest MMO, which a lot of people have been saying should go free to play already, uh, when they're talking about possibly funding subscriptions through in-game gold. Now, granted, it's not going to be like you just you know pay the gold for the subscription. There still has to be that exchange of currency. But this will, in some ways, combat the third-party market that's out there for gold buying. And they tried to do this before with a pet. They sold a pet on the marketplace, but it was something that would be uh, tradable, and you could actually sell it on the market boards. And what was interesting is that the market kind of bottomed out on those pets really fast. And so people bought them, and they wouldn't sell for a lot of gold in-game. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens with because when you're talking about subscription fees, I mean that is literally the lifeblood of a game. Much different than the pet. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how that plays out. But um, would you would you be interested in playing Final Fantasy XI if you could pay for your subscription in Gil? <laughs> it's hard enough to earn Gil in the game. I don't know if I'd want to. I mean, sure, why not? But I I don't know if I'd want to do that. Just drop the subscription down to like. Five dollars a month or something, you know, something ridiculously cheap. I don't know. Even twelve bucks is not a lot, but it's been that for a long time. And why and would they drop it down that low when people are still paying and, what's and out it's there like, today? Why would I pay twelve dollars for that when I can? Isn't it like twelve or fourteen dollars for fourteen? I, I don't know what the subscription fee is. I honestly can't remember either. It, it's something around that, but like, why would I pay twelve when I can pay? You know? But you can also do like the multi-month thing and all that other stuff. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. All right, well, it is time, ladies and gentlemen, get ready because the V O G Jam kicks off right now with a segment that we call Listless, and I will explain it to you guys here momentarily. But we have to get an old buddy of ours here on the line to play Listless with us tonight. So I'm going to hope that he is standing by. 
ready to share the themes and ideas with us. Hello, Bobby, are you there? I'm here. What's up? Hey, I, I should have said I should have said Atlanta. Are you there? Because <laughs> you always say Sacramento. Are you guys here? Are you guys yeah. there? How are you doing, here. my friend? I'm doing good. Good. Uh, are you excited about the game jam? I'm very excited. Me too. What's what what is exciting you about this in particular? That that I actually will have a reason to open up Unity again. Have you opened up Unity since Flappy Vog? Nope. And why not? Time. <laughs> well, or, you got an time. inspiration. You're going to have to make time for the uh, OLR uh, and uh, Bobby Blackwolf. And do we know if any other shows on the network have joined in on this? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But it's the video game jam. But the nice thing is about those words video game, you got V-O and G in the word. Ha ha. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Right? We created something, damn it. That's right. We want everybody to create something. Uh, all right. So let's go over the rules. Here's the way it's going to work. We want you to, before, let me, let me stop the listless music because we're not ready to get quite into listless yet. But let's go over the rules of the competition and what all, well, it's not really a competition. It's, it's everybody joins. It's a participation event. But here's the way it works. Uh, it is it is open for your submissions around this central theme. And you can make a game in Unity. You can make a game in RPG Maker. You can make a level in Little Big Planet. You can do a pen and paper game if you want to scan it as a PDF. Whatever works. We want you to create something, damn it. And the only question we're going to ask is, did you try? And that's a very subjective question, and Jamie will be the ultimate judge of the uh, can you try or did you try department because we don't want somebody just sending in like a piece of paper that says, you know, frame one, frame two, you know, you know what I mean. Like you got you got to try a little bit with this, but uh, we realize everybody has different skill sets, so we want you guys to try. And uh, the the theme should tie into whatever it is that you put together, lightly or heavily. It is all up to you. Um, you're going to submit your completed game jams to the following address. Jam, as in grape or jelly, jam at vognetwork.com. You're going to send those emails, jam at vognetwork.com, and uh, with a link to your finished product. Now, Bobby, vognetwork.com can actually host some of the finished products, right, Bobby? Right. So what I'm offering is because I've already got kind of a, a thing in our back end system that we run that I created for Vogue uh, is so if your game can be run in a browser, which is either Unity Web Player, uh, which uses its own uh, plugin, or if it's Flash, or if it's HTML5, uh, something that can be run in a browser and you don't have space for it yourself. I'm willing to host it on vognetwork.com for you. It'll actually appear in our drop-down because we have that arcade uh, menu item in our top drop-down. It'll actually appear in there. People can go in there and play it. Um, and essentially, I, I, what I'll do is I, I've created a forum, a sub-forum on our very not used forums at Vog Network. Uh, right up near the top about the video game jam. And I'll put technical specifications in there as to what you'd need to send. Um, we'll all, we're also willing to host your file for you, uh, where you know, so that way you don't have to worry about too much about like a mega account or a Dropbox account. We'll host the file on our servers as well if you just want to like distribute the zip file and have people install it that way. Uh, my only uh, rule on this, uh, and this is not censorship. Uh, this is because I don't want to have an awkward conversation with our web host that hosts Vog. Uh, no supreme gore and no supreme sex in nudity. You could still do that. We're just not going to host it. Right. So we want to say if that if you really want to make a porn game, go for it. And I will totally play your porn game. However, you just have to host it on your own server. So I just want to, you know, make that clear. We just we we got to keep all the super porn and the super gore off of our own server. But if that's what you want to submit, you know what? More power to you. Just create something, damn it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this is going to be so much fun. I can't wait. So there is a forum, and people can actually collaborate on that forum. Like I know Dark, Dark Tetsuya in our secret forum, he actually put together a giant list of all these possible ways you could make a game. And I mean, Dark Tetsuya, if you're listening, go go to that new forum right now and like copy-paste your post because it's great. So, all right. Kaijudo says, no sex. I'm out. Well, hold on. We didn't say no sex. We just said we're not. No obs you, need yeah. to go, you need to go hook up at someone else's place. That's what we're saying. <laughs> You could you can still submit it. I'm right. just not hosting it on that's, my website. That's right. You you got to have your hookup somewhere else. YYR says supreme sex and nudity. What if we leave off the sour cream and diced tomatoes? Oh stop. Oh you. Uh, Fifth Dream says can it be 
can it just be HTML? Sure, create something, damn it. Is it a game? Oh, there you go. All right, anything else we have to say with the rules? Oh, deadline. You have until, drum roll please. The drum roll's going. Brrr. You have until January 11th. It's three weeks from tonight to submit your finished product. January 11th will be the night that we will start the evaluation process. It's probably going to go on throughout the week. And when I say evaluate, just mean we're going to play your game. And we will, we're going to give it a, a fair review and a mention here on the show, but we will be, we'll be a lot nicer. If you're worried that we're going to make fun of your game or talk negative about your game, no, that's not what we're here about. We are here to promote and encourage people to create, so we promise we will only say positive things about your game and uh, keep the whole thing positive. We want to encourage people to create things and levels and so on. And uh, we'll live stream some of that and... Um, some of the prizes for participating, you're going to get some special VOG network loot, which comes with points that you can only get if you uh, participate in this. Uh, OLR will also be donating five mystery prize packs, five tangible mystery prize packs to random participants. Uh, and that is it. There is not going to be any judging as far as first, second, or third place because we just want to say create something, damn it. But we may still give out some special acknowledgments uh, as, as need be. So I think I covered everything, right, Bobby? Yeah, uh, basically that that's that's pretty much it. Um, I would say what like five p.m. Pacific, like when our show starts Sunday night, that's when submissions should be closed. Yeah, five Pacific, eight Eastern, so we can read them all out on Bobby's show. Yeah, just like their chatters. All and right. uh, you can be in teams; that's perfectly fine. You can even collaborate on on the forums and stuff. YYR brought up a good point. Maybe you know people should do status updates each week, just so we can kind of keep tabs on it. Absolutely, because. Because I could be mean and just submit Flappy Vogue if, if it fits the theme. If it fits the theme. I don't want to do that. Uh, and the theme I might suggest in a moment here is anything but Flappy Vogue. <laughs> and, and preferably no copyrighted works. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Try to stay away from the copyrighted stuff. Uh, we, we banned them from the theme submissions. Um, now, a, a lot of people asking about what qualifies as Supreme Gore or Sex. And Tiger Claw says, if the game has colorful language, is that allowed? Yes, because our shows have colorful language. That's yeah. fine. And as far as Supreme Gore and Sex, just use... If, if your game is called, like, you know, Decapitation Corpse Fucker, then, you know, <laughs> it's probably not going to be okay for, just, you know, the Game Jam to be remember, hosted on our site. we did have Decap Attack. On I know, I know. Look, just use it's just it's we're talking about hosting. Judgment. You can make whatever you want. Just it can't if it's like that. It can't be hosted on the site. Yeah. And and I will be the supreme dictator on what gets hosted or not. Yes. I will be like Steam. And if I say that I, I'm not going to host it, then I'm not going to host it. Yes. And and but you could still put it somewhere else. But again, I want to really encourage you guys to think outside those. <laughs> Don't get hung up on the sex and gore. Good God, people! There's so much more it's, out no, there. No, it's just it's just Rageinator. Yeah, and if you yeah, if you want to do sex and gore, go for it. Just on your own server. That's all. Just get your own Dropbox account or whatever. So there it is. <laughs> YYR in chat says decapitation corpse fucker theme noted. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about how listless works because it's been it's been quite some time since we played listless here on the show. So I know not everybody may have heard this. So this is the way it's going to work. You guys listening live get to vote on this as this unfolds. So here's how it's going to work. We have compiled all of our answers as well as some of the answers we've seen you guys post into a list of three items apiece. So each of us will put an item up on the list. That's going to leave us with a list of 12. Then comes the very hard part. We go around the room and we each remove one item from the list. Hey, it's tough, but it's a scientific process. It has to be done. Uh, no host can have their list decimated. So if, uh, if uh, somebody gets two answers eliminated from their list, the third answer gets immunity. So through that process, we'll be left with a list of eight that you guys will vote on over at live.vognetwork.com. Com. So right now, you're going to see that pop up on the board. If you are at, happen to be listening to the show, you're going to see that pop up on the screen. What should the video game jam theme be? And you can watch the list creation as it unfolds. We are going to let our guest go first tonight with his first answer. Bobby, what is your number three position? Even though it doesn't really matter for this, but we still say three, two, one. What is your number three answer for what should the video game jam theme be? Okay, well, first thing I want to say is that you have to be logged into vognetwork.com to see the list list pop-up. Oh, yes, very important. Thank you. So if you're not logged in, if you're just anonymous and haven't created an account, you're not going to see it come up. Thank My you. number three answer, obviously, because of who I am, drums or drumming? 
I see. So a little bit of percussion freaks there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Drums or drumming? Just because you have a personal atta- you have a personal interest right. in this, right? Yeah. All right. But just keep in mind, guys. Taiko Drum Master's already been done. All right. Drums or drumming? Let's put that on the list. All right. Not up next tonight, Loki. Loki, what is your number three answer? Uh, some of the they're not entirely original, but I, I used a random generator, so <laughs> for some of these, uh, but some were pretty good. Okay, so anyways, so uh, the first one I had was a buggy game. To win, you have to work around the bugs or die trying. That was one of my alternates. A buggy game. Interesting. Can so, I think? Can I think of like what was that game? Um, uh, rom rom check fail or something like yeah. that. Yeah, no, but I think especially in light of the year we've had and what I just complained about at the beginning of the show with uh, Tetris and everything, I think it's kind of funny that now the intention would be to make a buggy game. I like that. That's cute. All right, a buggy game. Let's add it to the list. All right, I'm up next with my number three answer. My number three answer tonight. Um, you know, gosh, I've been kind of going back and forth a little bit with the uh, with the ideas, and originally. I was going to put one called Revive the Arcade on the list, but the more I was thinking about it, I was kind of like, ah, I don't know if that, I, I think that might be too specific. I'm not sure if everybody would get that. So I'm going to, and chatters this way, you guys can't say you didn't have your, your say of this. I really like the idea of three colors. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to the list because I think that's going to encourage uh, some retro stuff, but not necessarily because there's a lot you could do with the three colors concept. So I like that idea so much, I'm going to put it on my list in the number three spot. All right, Dark Sakura, ladies last. <laughs> what is your number three answer? Typography. Typography, okay. The uh, the font fan in you wants typography. So sure. Mavis, Beach and, Mavis Beacon teaches typography. I don't want it to be like a word game. <laughs> oh. I, I just want typography to be a, th- a theme. A theme. In the game. All right, I like that. Let's add it on the list. All right, there it is. The number three answer so far. Drums or drumming, a buggy game, three colors, and typography. All right, let's add four more to the list as we get the number two answers. Bobby Blackwolf. All right, so my second theme, know when to quit. Know when to quit. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Again, another very kind of vague answer because I don't know why, but my mind instantly went to – well, I don't know if I should even say this because I don't want to steer the game. So you know what? I'm not yeah. even going to say what my mind instantly went to. But I don't think it's the same place that everybody else's would go. No, that's the we, beauty of it. That is the beauty of it. You guys, see, see, my other answers are very like silly, but you guys have these like really de- in depth, thought provoking things. Where's the dick and fart jokes tonight? Rage Nader's going to stop listening, you guys. All right, no one to quit. Let's put it up on the I list. I could have said twat, but that's banned. <laughs> that's right. That just leads to super porn. All right, uh, Loki, uh, let's get your number two answer. Uh, my number two answer is everything you know is wrong. Now that song is stuck in my head. Interesting. Everything you know is wrong. Oh, gosh. So it's kind of like take, you could put like a classic game in there, but have it play completely different. Oh, I love that idea. Well, that's one. Don't, 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 uh, don't tilt I, what uh, happens. I'm just saying. Give me no, an example. I like that idea. You know. Oh, that's a good one. Everything you know is wrong. I like that. All right. It is on the list. Uh, next up, my answer, my number two answer, I've decided, now I thought about what games do I really want to see? What do I want to see people make? And uh, the game I would like to see the Vogue uh, Faithful create is I want to see them make a game called, or involving, Jamie Joins the Circus. Jamie- what? <laughs> Jamie Joins the Circus. What? No. What? But but circuses are fun. It could be a it could be a freak I'm show. I'm afraid of clowns. <laughs> well, oh, that's that's a good tidbit to know. So maybe Jamie joins the circus to eliminate the clowns. Who Bitches knows? Just need to die. <laughs> All right, there it is. Jamie joins the circus. My number two answer, and now it is on the board. All right, Dark Sakura. What is your number two answer? MS Paint. MS Paint. Okay. Oh boy, I fear what might happen if uh, MS Paint. I will also throw Corel Draw in there, just as long as it's the the sixteen color lack of tablet poor drawing. All right. 
It's MS Paint. MS Paint or Corel Draw. I like that one. All right. It is on the list. This is going to be hard for the elimination round tonight. That's going to be so hard. All right. Uh, here we go. Number one answers from everybody. Here it is. The last one to put on the list. Bobby Blackwolf. I'm torn between two because I wrote down a bunch, but I'm going to go ahead and say Programmer Art. Programmer Art. I got, that's almost like MS Paint, but it's a little bit better than MS Paint. Almost. But is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's just different, I guess. All right. Programmer art. All right. The number one answer from Loki. What is it? See, I, I, I had two thoughts on this. And one thought, though, is if I did that, that that might win. And I don't want that to win, actually. But I just would like to. I'll to keep that as an honor, honorable mention, I guess. But um, I'll just stick with also one of the ones that came up on the random generator. Um, unwanted powers. Unwanted powers. Would that be about the Sony Network TV show coming soon? <laughs> it could be. It could be. All right. We're going to add that to the list. Unwanted powers. There it is. All right. My number one answer. You know what? You guys enjoyed the Jamie Joins the Circus answer so much. I thought we would do another one involving some Vogue personalities. And so my number one answer tonight, Bobby and the Banhammer is my number one answer. What? No reaction from Bobby? That's Flappy Vogue, right? <laughs> it could be. It could be. No submitting Flappy Vogue, though. All right. There it is on the list. Bobby and the Banhammer. All right. Uh, here we go. Dark Sokka. Last chance for people to have their items on the list. Dark Sokka, what is... Your number one answer. Ink. Ink. All right. You've got a very design mindset tonight. Ink I is do, your final answer. Because I like to challenge people to think outside of... I want to... Yeah, ink. Black ink. No, ink. I think... I, specifically black oh, ink. Oh, specifically you, black ink. Excuse me. So do you want to know my my uh, answer that I've foregone was? What was that? President Cat. President... Oh, my God. How did we not get President Cat on the list? Oh because my God. it would win. It's copyrighted. And I <laughs> don't want it to win. It's, you don't want it to be that easy. It's That's too... It's well, you Bonus know, points for throwing in President Cat. The, bonus points for... But any, you know what, though? You could do even, even President Cat for any of these other things. Yeah, I was going to say, that's even though this isn't graded, bonus points to any OLR, Bobby, or VOG references that you work into these games. I mean, like, think of something something vague like three colors of typography. You could totally do, like, a President Cat game out of that. So, all right. You want to know some of my honorable mentions yeah, that please. I threw out? So I also, and I actually used the same random theme generator just because I just clicked it, like, a thousand times and picked out my favorites. Uh -huh. So I had losing to win, delayed reaction, please enter your name, and recurring dream, and then actually the buggy game was the other one. Oh, how funny! All right, so here it is, and be thinking about what is going to be eliminated because it's going to uh, happen. It's got to happen. It's part of the process, y'all. The elimination round. Here is the list as it stands right now: drums or drumming, know when to quit, programmer art, a buggy game, everything you know is wrong, unwanted powers, three colors, Jamie joins the circus, Bobby and the Banhammer typography, MS Paint or Corel Draw, and black ink. All right. Here it is. The part none of us want to do, but we have to. It's science, people. It's science. Which of these is not worthy of the list? Bobby Blackwolf. You know, when I'm, I'm looking at these, I'm trying to get something that's not so straight. Like a game jam, a good game jam theme shouldn't be something that's so straightforward. Or uh, so linear, you know, like where it really constrains people. So I am going to eliminate Jamie going to the circus. Oh, oh thank, thank God. Thank you. Yeah. But now I have to think of another one. Oh, come on. You could have done like just a regular circus theme or something and just put Jamie as a character in it. That would have been yeah. easy. Easy. Come on. They did circus on the Atari 2600. Boo. All right. Whatever. It is stricken from the list. And you're a jerk. All right. <laughs> Loki, you're next. Which of these is not worthy of the list? Only because I'm not creative enough right now and to understand how I'd even incorporate this in there. I'm sorry, Jamie, but I'm going to have to take off typography. Oh, That's typography. Fine. I know some concepts are beyond people. 
<laughs> hey, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. You know, if I, I got to admit, I kind of wanted to do like a text adventure that might be tricky to work. T- typography is a tricky one, Jamie. It's a tricky one. So uh, it is stricken I, from the I, list. I will tell you, though, I did have an idea of making a game where the landscape was made out of text. Oh, okay. So Actual ZBT. words. All right. So well, you could still you could do it in three colors or one of these other ones. We'll see. That's okay. That's okay. I'm, I'm probably gonna stick with my first idea. All right, cool. Well, for now though, we've got to uh, we got to eliminate a couple more from the list. Oh shit, it's my turn, and I have to ask myself which of these is not worthy of the list. Um, I am going to eliminate. I'm gonna take a. Re- I'm gonna do a revenge strike on Bobby, and I'm gonna take off one of his answers because again, this is one of those ones I, I like. Most of these, I instantly had an idea in my mind, but I couldn't think of one for programmer art. I'm sorry. I have to eliminate that from the list, Bobby. I'm okay with that. But we're going to call that a revenge vote. All right. What do we have left? So there it is. What do we have left? Dark Soccer wants to know what's left. Well, Loki has a fully intact list, hint, hint, but Loki's list is a buggy game, everything you know is wrong, and unwanted powers. And we also have drums or drumming, know when to quit, three colors, Bobby and the Banhammer, MS Paint, or Corel Draw and Black Ink. I actually am going to go with Everything You Know Is Wrong just because that Weird Al song is stuck in my head. And I would make, <laughs> oh, a, weird, yeah. I would make a Weird Al game and I would be so distracted. So, yeah. All right. Well, this this is, you know what? That's that's hey, the, yeah, that, that's the, cool. the list worked out all right. This is the nice politically correct positivity list because each person had one answer removed. That's the way we like to see it happen. So there it is. It is now up to you guys. How many people can say they've had their answer removed because of Weird Al? <laughs> Just saying. Well, well right. for me about that is that there's actually a game that's done by some local Georgia developers who once it comes out, I'm going to have them on my show. Uh-huh. It's called Default Dan. Uh-huh. And the entire premise of the game is that it looks like Mario, except the enemies are good and the coins kill you. It's basically it's everything you know is wrong. It's basically that. And that's all I would be able to think of if I was working on that theme. All right. So fair enough, fair enough. And to be fair, also with the programmer art, I kind of thought it was really similar to the MS Paint answer. Yeah. So and he hit stone points that out in chat too. That so makes me it think works of out. Though, another idea if, though that I did have to suggest. What's that? Power down. If <laughs> you want to see a perfect example of programmer art, check out this week's Cooking with Unity. This on Monday, where they uh, made a snowman out of uh, primitives in Unity. That is programmer art right there. All right. Well, it is in your hands now, folks. It is answerable. You may submit your answers now. Place your votes now. Uh, You can vote for your number one is your first click, and your number two is your second click answer. Your votes are weighted. Number one gets more points than number two. So submit your answers now at live.vognetwork.com. And a little later in the show, we're going to tabulate it up and reveal the big theme for the first Vogue Game Jam. I'm excited. I think... I think some people's heads are turning already about some of these. In fact, I think some people are going to be pissed if one of these doesn't win. <laughs> I'm just, I'm excited. I can't wait. But again, if the theme you like doesn't win, I still think you get bonus points for incorporating two or more of these into your jam or any other long running joke. So get creative, people. Get creative. All right, Bobby, before I let you go, anything else you want to add to this? Uh, no. Good luck. And uh, I look forward to playing everybody's game. All right, me too. I look forward to it. Bobby, I wish you were here to eat latkes with us. I wish I was there, too. All right. I'll throw one at you. Yes, I'm throwing you some applesauce right now. Plop. Thanks, right. guys. Bye, my friend. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Um, part two of this list list to come up shortly in the show. But, uh, yeah, place your votes now. As P. Diddy says, vote or die. Meanwhile, we've got some more uh, segments to get back to, including the mailbag. So Dark Sakura is going to dive into the mailbag. She's going to find some emails that she believes are worthy of reading. To do my favorite Eddie Izzard quote, it's a little sticky. All right. We have a email. A email. One One. singular email. One. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Or, as I learned recently, the way to say it in Hebrew is echad. (laughs) All right. Fair enough. Hi, OLR. I wanted to give kudos to the nice bunch of guest talks you've had in recent shows. They were very fun and informative. If I may, I would like to suggest someone to interview on the show. YouTube personality uh, Ryan Latorno, a.k.a. Northern Lion. He's Canadian. That's all you need to know. Sign him on. End of email. Anyway, Ryan is best known for his long-running Let's Play series of The Binding of Isaac, though he has played through some other notably difficult games such as Europa University. Universalis 4, Spelunky, FTL, and XCOM Enemy Unknown. 
On top of that, he hosts live streams with friends a few times a week and also offers quick impressions on games that have just released or still in the works, typically more with indies than AAA games. I think it would be interesting to know what it's like for Ryan to play video games to entertain others for a living. When did it seem uh, viable to attempt this, and how risky was it to try? What sort of difficulties does he face nowadays? Has he? Why don't you just interview him, dude? <laughs> interview him for us and send us the recording. I'm kidding. Uh, has he faced any criticism over his livelihood? Were there any unwelcome surprises or cool perks to have come up since he began? What would he recommend to others who want to start their own channel? Yeah, I bet he'd answer these questions if he emailed him. But I know I, I. In all seriousness, I, I appreciate the referral. I didn't at first. I was like, well, there's a lot of people that do let's play videos. What what makes and the kind of what I didn't get from this this uh, email was what makes this guy unique? Why do you want this particular individual on the show? Because I don't I don't know the guy. Yeah, uh, me uh, he, he sounds like you really like him. I'm just curious, like what it is that really makes this guy unique. But then I did hear in the email, it's, it appears he makes a living off doing this. So that's that is unique. Not everybody can do that. We don't make a living off this show. So this guy's doing something right. Well, there's more to the email. Yep. These are just some things I'm curious about, and I'm sure OLR could come up with other interesting questions given the opportunity. Even if Ryan doesn't get on the show, I want to give my thanks for having my suggestion read on air. Or can I just bribe y'all three? You like bribes involving tacos, right? That'll work, but lacas are kind of winning me over tonight. Just from the nasty canasta. We need to bust into that pie. <laughs> we need to have a new segment just called pie. <laughs> we do need to bust into that pie. Let's we, make it happen. We are done with the emails. It's going to be a celebratory pie for when we have our VOG Game Jam theme determined, which, by the way, now is the time where I say... Last call for listless votes. Get your butt logged into the site and vote. Last call for those votes. All right. Let's get to the FUs of the week. It's after the mailbag segment. Wait, don't run away yet, Dark Sakura, because you have to give your FU. Dark Sakura, your FUs of the week. Um, F you to the lingering bits of the plague that I had last week that make my lungs hurt and running out of my wonderful codeine syrup. And um, F you to not having a, a Tron pinball table. Those are pretty rad. I played one a couple days ago. Nice. Took pictures for you. I know. No, I saw on I saw on Facebook, and I was. I took them just for you, Rob. I was wondering where just the hell you were you. that had a table, but all it was for a, you. It was a private party, right? All for you. Why wasn't I invited? It's a private party. Why wasn't I invited? I'm awesome. I went to the low cat party, and then we went to the pinball party. I liven up everybody. I know like 20 people that work at low cat. Why wasn't I invited? <laughs> I should have been somebody. Well, next date. year you'll be my my pl you'll be my plus two. Awesome. All right. <laughs> uh, Loki, you're FU of the week. Um, just kind of go back to what I was saying before. F you to Telltale Games for, uh, or not, I'm sorry, not Telltale. I always confuse the two TT games. Traveler's Tales, fuck them for their really shitty flight controls in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. I swear to God, that, that game would have been awesome, but that right there kind of really pisses me off. Thankfully, the races, because it's a game meant for kids, are really fucking easy. Uh, the driving races. But, uh, yeah, fuck those flight controls. They're fucking terrible. All right. Uh, my FU of the week. Uh, first one goes to the fact that I wasn't invited to the low-cap party. <laughs> no, it's all, in all seriousness, my second FU of the week is the fact that of, um, of all the trainers in our company, all of them, I'm the only one that has to work next week. And I have a class Monday, Tuesday. No, not Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday next week uh, I have to teach. And then I have to teach the next week, too. Uh, every day that isn't technically a holiday with the new year involved. But you know what? At least I like my job. But still, it always sucks when you have to work and everybody else doesn't. But that's okay because I'll get the time off to go to Seattle instead. So that's awesome. So, and Dark Soccer's complaining that she has to work on Christmas. But you're Jewish! All right. All right, anyway, they can't hear you. You're not on mic. She's too busy slicing up this amazing pie that I can't wait to dig into. So let's do a couple more stories, then we're going to reveal the listless winner, and then we're going to get into uh, your calls. So let's do it. Uh, Loki. 
So Humble Bundle, everybody's pretty much familiar with that website and kind of the process behind it. You buy a game for whatever price you want, and part of that money goes to charities, and part of it goes to the devs and uh, Humble Tip and all that fun stuff. Well, they've raised a lot of money since launching that site back in May 2010, over $50 million for charity since that first sale. And they've even um, raised, was it $100 million towards developers? So that's pretty awesome. And um, they're saying, you know, the very first Humble Bundle raised $400,000 for charity, $200,000 each for EFF and Child's Play. And, um, you know, just, it's just, that's just amazing to see, you know, all this money going to these, you know, awesome charities. And, um, hell even like they're not the only site out there now now they have all these other bundles that go to you know different charities i'm kind of curious to see how much money these you know sites are kind of injecting to these great causes so uh awesome although i gotta say though i'm starting to run out of you know games to purchase on the, their site because a lot of them seem to be repeating mm. and i have a lot of leftover steam keys like <laughs> i don't need any more copies of fez please no more copies of fez <laughs> please no more copies of fez all right uh, and uh, one more story I have for you guys, and this is uh, this is tough to report on. This is uh, kind of sad, but in the same way, it shows the good side of the gaming community. And and the last official news story I wanted to have, because you know it's it's been kind of a rough year in some ways in the gaming world, and there's been a lot of very heated, intense, and sometimes downright personal debate that's been going on out there. So I I like it when gamers can band together for something that's good and um uh, unfortunately the situation is is awful the situation is not so good and uh it has to do with final fantasy 14 but i just want to say because i know you're all going to go fanboy but hold on i'd be reporting on this even if it wasn't final fantasy 14 this is just kind of the first big case that we've seen in final fantasy 14 and this has to do with a reddit post that was posted on the final fantasy subreddit last night where a free company leader uh put a new permanent rank on a friend that they were informed was going to be passing away literally within hours. And uh, there was a little screenshot that was posted over to Imager uh, that noted that uh, Codex Valda, and I hope I said that name right, Codex Valda would be the immortal siren in this uh, particular free company. And uh, that, that alone is pretty cool, but what really happened next was really amazing. And, um, you know, the, uh, the player behind uh, the character only 29 years old and uh, passed away the other night. And yes, unfortunately, he did pass away due to complications from renal failure, which is another word for kidney failure. Um, and it was one of those things where they knew he needed a new kidney. And it was kind of a surprise that this happened. I mean, because because it was, yeah, they had like a donor lined up. You know, this was just one of those. And I think they even said one in a million situations where, unfortunately, it was that one in a million. So um, Codex did, unfortunately, pass away. But the side of this that's good, I mean, that part's obviously not good and very tragic. But the side of this that, that's really great is that this really just created this spontaneous outpouring of support in the game. And it started with one or two people just kneeling with their characters in front of the house and staying logged in and kneeling. And then that slowly grew on the Gilgamesh server to, I think they said it was up to 80 people at one point and more. And then it was spilling onto other servers in the same housing district, people kneeling and being respectful. And I saw um, some people took out their fairies as scholar and actually spelled out the guy's name, Codex, with their fairies as a bit of a tribute. And I just thought, you know, I was like, this is the type of stuff why I love games and why I love MMOs was that the community, you know, put all their shit aside about, you know, so-and-so doesn't heal fast enough in a dungeon or whatever, put all that stuff aside to take a moment out to recognize one of their own community that was gone way too soon. And I just, you know, and this, this story has been gaining a lot of steam on, uh, like, you know, I know Kotaku did a story on it and so it's spreading to other places as well. And I just thought this is a great example of the community recognizing one of their own. And I do hope the Final Fantasy 14 developers, I know they're busy with the uh, Japanese fan fest right now. I hope the 14 developers kind of notice this and maybe we'll consider doing an NPC tribute. And I realize you can't, do a tribute for each and every person that played Final Fantasy XIV that happens to pass away, just like they can't do that in WoW or whatever. But for particularly invested people and for particularly people that seems very tied into the community where the community sort of, 
you know, um, spontaneously comes together for something like this. I really hope that the 14 developers do uh, some type of official recognition of support for Codex. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry for Codex's friends and families that this happened, but um, just know that there are literally hundreds and thousands and thousands now of uh, people who are remembering this particular player because, you know what, we all love this game as well. Um, anyway, let's see. Fifth Dream in chat says there was a get together tonight on McGarsimer. I put off some fireworks. I'm very sad I missed it. Um, I, I had to do this show though, but I'm glad I could at least mention it on the show. Uh, Act Def says the gaming community can be amazing when it tries to. And uh, Dungeon Buster says indeed. And I think that is a fantastic note to end on. Um, but I do want to point out SHO and Hunter Matt also says the guy's real name was Ty. I have a friend who played games with him for several years. So, um, a moment of silence, please, for Codex. All right, let's uh, open up our Skype line over at one eight seven seven Game O L R, or our username on Skype, Orange Lounge Radio, and we will take your calls on uh, anything you would like to talk about uh, that we've talked about tonight. Are or we tabulate the winner yet? I was just going to say, oh. or perhaps you want to call us to tell us about what you're going to do for. The Game Jam theme. That's right, guys. It is time to reveal the official winner of tonight's Game Jam. So here it is, the theme for the Game Jam. I'm just waiting for it to pop in right now. The votes are being tabulated right now, and we're going to reveal the winner. And we're actually going to – I'm going to go ahead and reveal what got really close and didn't quite make it. I'm going to reveal that as well. Um, so I'm just waiting for those answers to pop in. Which they should any minute. <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing. Do I have to reload? Maybe I do. This all is automated behind the scenes. No, I don't want you to resend data that you already sent before. Hold on, I'm going to try this one more time. I think I remember something about you have to be on the page for a minute before it pops in. I might need to actually Set it on make fire. it live. Uh oh. Uh oh. Did you break it? No, I didn't break it. Hold on, I'm gonna try making it live again, just not answerable. We'll see if that fixes it. It's been so long since I've done this that I forget how to make it show me the. I just I know what the winner New was. New theme. Everything's broken. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a buggy game wins. Woo! Oh, uh, I, I I do know which one was on top, but I was hoping to name the other two as well. Bobby says I broke it. Recheck answerable, I think. All right, we're going to make this answerable again. Hold on. Let's see what happens. This is going to be so funny, you guys. There it is. Finally. Woo, it popped in. Oh, this is going to be so funny. All right. Number three answer. The number three theme. Just missed it. Missed it by that much. MS Paint or Corel Draw. Very close. Very close. Number two answer. Bobby and the Banhammer. Oh. Thank Missed God. it by that much. And the number one, the winner, this year, or maybe we'll do this every six months, who knows, this uh, first Vogue Game Jams theme will be, and how appropriate, a buggy game is the winner. A buggy game is going to be the theme. There it is. A buggy game, the theme for the first ever Vogue Game Jam. A buggy game. How appropriate when I broke the whole fucking website trying to see the answer. So there it is. All right. Thank you, everybody, for voting and participating. And I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. And again, just especially after the rant I went on earlier this evening and everything else that's been going on in the gaming industry, I think this is a perfect fit. I really do. A buggy game. But, um, you know, yeah, I New Earth Defense Force game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that that's what you really wanted? No, that's, no, that's no, what, just joking. That was your way of getting copyright in there without it. All right. Nice. You can't copyright killing Jane <laughs> in sex. That's been done in movies before. <laughs> All right. I would never do that. Maybe. All right. Anyhow, uh, let's see. And some some folks talking about what they were going to do for Bobby and the Banhammer. Uh, Act F says a card game similar to Cards Against Humanity, but trying to get a card or comment to get you banned. Oh man, we should I should have let people submit for the top three. That would have been awesome to see. But we'll see. All right, a buggy game. There it is. Dungeon Buster in chat says all the bugs. 
And Hitstun says, I hope you guys like exploitable game mechanics. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be hard programming that in, but I'm, we'll see. Wait. I don't know. I When I hear a buggy game, I think of, like, actual bugs. Like, why can't a buggy game be, like, it can frog? Be. It can be why can't one. it be frog fractions? <laughs> <laughs> Is this frog fractions, too? <laughs> This was all a ruse for Frog Fractions 2. Oops. <laughs> all right. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. So there we go. I, I And uh, VXJSNXV says number two can be done in the spring. Well, you know what? It depends on how the participation level is this time. So, again, when you're finished with your, with your theme of a buggy game, uh, you're going to submit that to jam at orangeloungeradio.com. The deadline is... January 11th. Not that I'm going to stop you from submitting after that date. And I don't think Bobby would be opposed to putting things on the site that come in after the date. However, if you want to earn one of the participation prizes, if you want to earn one of the loot, and you want to earn that official recognition, you got to be done by January 11th. Get to work. A buggy game. All right. Once again, the Skype line is open. one 877 game or Our username on Skype, Orange Lounge Radio. Uh, last minute stories, Loki? Oh, I haven't even been looking. <laughs> <laughs> you're too excited about the buggy game. I, I, you're, you're I've seen some good examples of like some really funny buggy ideas. Like they didn't do, like another game jam didn't do this, did they? Or um, I don't think so. But no, I've seen like I, I still like to think even if another game jam did it, we would still be the first that says you can create anything. You're not limited to Unity or what. You can do anything you want. Yeah, usually game jams will be like you just program it. And, you know, you can use Unity, you can use whatever, but you know it has to be like a program, not like you know you can't just make a card game or board game or whatever. Um, no, I've seen some good examples of like just usually in like the Unity uh, subreddit, you know, where they'll be showing like you know there's this one guy actually does a lot of development on there. He kind of posts updates and stuff of things he's working on and, and last couple of ones they put up there is like some bugs they had in the game that he did you know coded something slightly wrong and it was a hilarious result so um it kind of gives me ideas so i don't know all right well our phone lines are are not really lighting up <laughs> so here's me stretching trying to fill time do to do um let me go to the twitter i'm trying to eat this pie you guys are making me fill time i'm not able to eat this pie this upsets me Anyway, I'm going to go to Twitter. Let's yeah, see what we get. tweet the thing. Tweet the thing. Uh, let's see. Eric RPG sent a tweet with a link. Let me pull up this link and see what this is all about. Again, if you want to call us on Skype, Orange Lounge Radio, all one word, or, or our, our telephone number, one eight seven seven game olr uh, Let's see. Uh, we got sent a story by Eric RPG um, to a story on Silicon Era. Which says, Queen Victoria blasts through Martian mines in Rock Boshers DX on PS4 and PS Vita. Um, so this is a game that has, uh, I guess, cross-buy and cross-save support. It's a twin-stick puzzle shooter set on Mars starring Queen Victoria. That is pretty fucking random, but I like that. I like games that are really random. Uh, it's stylized as if you were playing it on a ZX Spectrum. I like stylistic games. That's really cool. All right, now our phones are lighting up. It was just a little delayed. Let's get to it. Hi, you're on Orange Launch Radio. Who's this? Hey, guys, it's Jason. Hey, Jason. Wow, are you at the office? Cause you got a... I am at the office. I was going to say, that's a huge background back there. Oh, my gosh. I didn't realize you were back in San Francisco. When are you coming to visit? Um, That's a good question. That's a good I've question. I've actually been, like, super busy. Obviously, haven't been talking about it with you at all. I understand. I understand. Uh, well, what's on your mind tonight, buddy? Um, there was a topic that you guys were talking about earlier, and go figure that as soon as I clicked, uh, I hit, I hit call. Uh, the particular topic completely slipped my mind. Um, <laughs> the actual game. Uh, oh, Tetris, Tetris on the PS4. Like I, I've been in these kind of conversations before, and I always am completely motivated to chime in because, like, I, I just. I, I'm not a full-time developer. I never have been. And so it's like I, I don't always have the way of really explaining these things. But being who I am, being the person, that, uh, knowing what I know and being in these kinds of situations, like I have to defend developers because delaying the game to get it right, like like development – 
you never know what you need until you don't have it. You never know what you need until you've lost it. Um, there's an old thing in IT where if everything works great, you don't even know you have a sysadmin. It's when things go wrong that you're you know, breathing down their neck because things have to get taken care of. All of those kinds of things extend to development as well. Like what was, this is maybe a bad example for Tetris, but what would have happened, what happens when any game is delayed? Like people don't defend developers. They jump down the throats of, especially in the case of Tetris, this game isn't difficult. No, the, the, the design and theory and everything behind Tetris isn't difficult, but that doesn't mean that implementations, first game, first game of its kind on its generation, new tools, new libraries, new engines, like, Yes, engine is uh, uh, Tetris is a simple shape game, but there is so much more detail that goes into it, which is literally what the act of development is. And it just, I just don't like deriding developers. I know I've done it myself. I just don't like deriding developers. Period. I I I understand that to a point, Jason. And I think sometimes when we have issues with games, a lot of times it's not even necessarily the people working on the front lines who are the quote-unquote problem. And I think in a case where a game re gets released buggy, specifically like Assassin's Creed and that whole debacle, I really think that <laughs> is just pressure where the developers needed more time to make it happen, and they were denied from up above. And they really Absolutely. should be given the time. Absolutely, like that. That that is a really significantly good example because that was just blatant and mm -hmm. absurd. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, but the the issue is, Jason. It's the same company, and now it's Tetris, and so that's showing me a pattern, and that's kind of worrisome. And I, I I do understand that when games get delayed, everybody gets really pissed off. But at the same time, you know, a Miyamoto or somebody had said this a long time ago: if a game gets delayed, if it's good, people will never remember that it was delayed. And mm -hmm. I think to some extent that really is true. And I know at least we here at OLR, at least I like to think so. You know, maybe 10 years ago we were a little more in that crowd of, oh, why are they delaying games? But after seeing so much crap like this happen, like when The Witcher 3 got delayed a few weeks ago, it was what, like the second delay. You know what? I don't want Witcher 3 coming out and being broken. If mm -hmm. they have to delay it two more months to get it right, then cool, do it. Half I, I was going to say exactly the same thing that Bonds did. Half-Life 2 was delayed significantly at least two or three times. And, this and along the way, there was also the, the legendary E3 hack that leaked significant Half-Life 2 content to everybody. And you can guarantee this is why they don't even announce Half-Life 3. They'll announce <laughs> it when it... No, seriously, they're going to announce it when it's done and ready to go. That's yeah. why when we joke around that Gabe needs to come out on three uh, at E3 and go, Half-Life 3's on Steam right now and drop the mic, that's no joke. That's how it's going to fucking go down. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I just... It's, it's kind of... The, the way that it was being presented and the way that people have learned to talk about these kinds of incidents that just, that just grate on me because, you know, blame, blame the developers, blame the testers. They're, they're the go-to because they are the face of the game shy of, like, the CEO of the company or something like that. But nowhere in that discussion at the start of the show did anything, like, businessy get discussed. Like, it was, it was the fault of the developers, period, when it was being discussed. And that's the kind of stuff I, that, that I – that's the that's the part of it that really disappoints me is right. that that is the go-to vocabulary for everybody to talk about when there's a good chance that a ton of developers or testers had brought up saying these things are problems. But for business, political, possibly tech, technical people downplaying things, oh, three frames gone isn't bad. Well, that person has never heard of speed running before and <laughs> – knows the t technical well, obsession level that people go to. If I gave the impression that I was solely placing blame on the developers for the Tetris debacle, then I apologize. But <laughs> I think what I kind of meant to say is that the development on this game clearly wasn't finished. Whose mm -hmm. fault is that? Probably management's. Mm -hmm. Well, and more so that I, I don't even... I, it, it's not even really the developers that I blame. It's a lack of QA. And I think mm -hmm. that's an okay thing to say. There's, there's a complete lack of QA in this game, or this would have been caught. It's not yeah. something that happens like on level five on Tuesdays when you're maybe connected on a shoddy Comcast connection where this happens. No, it happens to everybody if you just play a normal game. And yeah. that's where and I'm that, like... And okay. I can, the, the funny thing is I can actually kind of see, uh, I, I can envision that some of those same arguments happen like, business-wise. You know, like, it's Tetris. We know this franchise. We've done it before. Like, 
why, why are these problems problems? Well, because the tools don't remain the same between generations and even years. Even, you know, two, two games well, of an iteration in the same generation, I, things I, can change entirely. I actually don't get so bothered by the whole, but it's Tetris. It should be easy to do type of argument because, well, yeah, it's okay, it's Tetris, but it's Tetris on the PS4, you know, and there's certain expectations of what PS4 games should have in them, you know especially with this whole like social you know era we live in and game sharing and all this stuff like there's excuse me <clears throat> hiccups are killing me uh <laughs> those uh, there's a certain expectations where i don't think it's as simple as oh you just put the game boy version of tetris on the ps4 you know i mm -hmm. think there is a certain greater expectation than that so i'm 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 actually not going to be one of those people that says oh it's just tetris but i am going to say oh it's just a qa department <laughs> All right. Well, that's halfway there, so I guess I can give you at least that much. All right, fair enough. Hey, you thinking about participating in the Game Jam? I, I Because it doesn't have to just be like a classically programmed game that opens the door for me. Like I said, I've never been a full-time programmer. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of concepts that did kind of cross my eye, and my number one vote matched the winner. So there are definitely ideas but with traveling back home and all that kind sure. of stuff we'll see i sure. certainly would like to but we'll see i understand well you know the golden rule is just create something damn it just even Have if it's not it. even if it's not uh, the totally fleshed out game you wanted to build in unity create some something damn it all right jason i'm gonna let you go to try squeezing some more calls but take care buddy we miss you. you you too thank you all right bye bye by the way, you guys, Jason has an epic fucking beard growing on his face now. Like, I saw I saw that beard when it was a little bit, but getting to see that on Skype via the video, that is epic. That's an epic beard he's got there. All right. 1877GameOLR, username on Skype, Orange Lounge Radio. We'll leave it open for a couple minutes to see if something can get through here. Uh, I did see at least one other caller trying to get through, so I want to give them another chance to try to get through, and we will see what happens. Uh, oh, I do see another call coming through. Let's get to it. Hi, you're on Orange Launch Radio. Who's this? Legend of Zaku here. Hey, Sa oh, Zaku, you are really loud. Get a little ways away from the mic and tell us what's on your mind. Oh, nothing much. Just uh, celebrating uh, the end of uh, my birthday and the start of the 30s for me. Well, happy freaking birthday. My God, you're 30 years old. Yep, 30, the big 3-0. How old were you when you first started listening to this show? Oh, I'd say about uh, 19. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. can't. I can't. I quit. We're done. The last OLR, everybody. Have fun with that game jam. We won't be here when it's done. No, I'm, ki I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Happy birthday, Zaku. Yep. You know what? 30s aren't as bad as everybody says it is. 30 or 30s is actually kind of awesome. Everything's better. That's right. And Everyth less stupid. Everything's better. But I mean, it's like Logan's run where after like a certain age that you know, the light in the palm of your hand blinks and you have to take that ride into that other, you know, that other magical place, obviously, you know, where they kill you off at that certain point. But I digress. I guess the point is to the young, to young folks, I'm pretty much a dinosaur, you know, senior citizen. At oh, that point. whatever. You know what? The thing they don't realize is that sex is better in your thirties. You know, TMI, I don't Speak care for yourself. T <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> TMI, I don't care. I don't care. All right. Well, I don't think you called in just to talk about your uh, birthday. What else is on your mind, my friend? Um, just catching up on the gaming uh, that I'm trying to do right now. Apparently, uh, recent recently uh, dovetailed the folks who you know the folks who brought us Train Simulator. They recently released uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator on Steam, and apparently. Um, as much as I, you know, the fact that I managed to jump on it a few months before that thing was announced, it's like whether or not there's if there's any life left in that whole sim flight sim market. And I mean, after the you know the past few months, after getting hooked on it and spending dozens of dollars on third party add ons for it, mo mainly like commercial airliners. I mean, is it is you know it, the point is whether or not there's still room for something like that given you know given the fact that it's almost like 10 years removed from where it, for you know from the from the height of the game um i think especially with flight sims there's going to kind of always be an audience for that you know and they did they they just released that game on steam like just came out but you know if you look at steam and the simulator like okay let me tell you let me tell you a little story 
there's another simulator game that I see all the time on Steam, and I'm always sitting there going, people actually play this game, and it's Farming Simulator is the name of the game. Okay, Farming oh, Simulator. Oh, yeah, I heard about is that. There? Okay, right? And it's up there all the time. Okay, so when I'm at E3... And we're doing the whole thing where it's like we're going to live, you know, cover E3, ask us questions on Twitter, da 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 I get a question from, like, Germany out of the blue from some person because I posted a random picture of me in front of something funny at the Farming Simulator booth. And the guy was like, you have to tell me everything about Farming Simulator. What's the game like? Is it playable? <laughs> What's in the game? You got to tell me everything about Farming Simulator. You'd be Simulator. surprised. There's a lot and of people like, that are interested in that game. The fuck? Farming Simulator? It's, really? It's on, like, console. Maximum Games is the one that's been distributing that. And I, I seriously talked to the guy that's ahead of the company when I was working at my old job. And... He would tell me stories about how well that game's selling. It's like their best-selling game. So there are people that eat that up. And look at all those other right. simulators that they have on Steam. There's like a ton of them. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, they have DCS World, which has like the fighter uh, jet uh, simulator, which is essentially like a like a chore. Not, not to belittle the fact that certain flight sim add-ons, like you try starting up a 777 from, <laughs> from, cold, from Dark cold and dark all the way up to to the point where it's taxing but that you thing know is like I, you need clip notes for that zaku i think there still absolutely is an audience for flight simulator i mean you you express interest in it and you're just 30 years old you're still young there's still room for tons of of uh, flight simulator games i think though maybe the audience is a little different is what it is because i remember a day when i was younger when i was 19 years old or what have you I remember when flight simulator games were oftentimes kind of the benchmark for new hardware. Like when new things would come out on PCs, it always seemed to be like a flight simulator game was one of the first things to come out to really show off the graphics right. and the, the capabilities of the, the systems. And I think that's changed, Zacho. I think flight simulator games have turned more into people that are you know enthused about you know uh, amateur flight or what have you, uh, or right. just the enthusiasts of the genre. Right, and the and the thing is, like you're talking about, like FSX, which is almost a decade old, that still runs on DirectX nine. Meanwhile, you have like X Plane, the latest version, which X Plane ten, which apparently, you know, it's a little slightly better in terms of graphics, but the only thing that's uh, close to you know to actually matching you know a modern you know the only thing close to a modern day flight flight simulator right now is Prep R three D, and that's per, that's a professional uh version of fsx that lockheed martin puts out for real pilots hmm. but i guess i guess with dovetail now at the helm whatever 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 future flight sim game they're going to make is obviously not going to be called flight simulator but it's going to be in essence a spiritual successor of that franchise and hopefully it will bring the graphics into the into this decade of a you know modern computing where you could just take advantage you know complete advantage of a modern pc yeah. instead of just doing everything in in a single core, you take, you know, you, you exploit multi-core and high-end uh, pro video processing to essentially, you know, and more importantly, 64 bits so that you can actually, you know, you can run a game like FSX, which is very intensive for, for a 10-year-old game, which is not optimized. And you could essentially run it like, you know, you could take advantage of new hardware that's available today. Right. And that, yeah, and hopefully, uh, I've... I, as I said, it was on sale for five bucks a couple of days ago when it first came out. I'm I'm kind of skeptical on getting rebuying it again on Steam because apparently you can't <laughs> activate your existing keys on it. You huh. have to buy it. You have to buy the game again. Nice. So I'm well, I'm not too sure. Other than the fact that you can now play online multiplayer again, I it's a wait and see approach in terms of uh, how it'll actually perform with the existing. Uh, third-party add-ons that I have on it. Well, you know, I do I do want to um, see the game in motion. I hope some people are live-streaming it, because I do want to see kind of... Yeah, I haven't really looked at a flight simulator game in a while, and I bet... I bet, I bet they're still very, very pretty to look at and so forth. And uh, Yeah, if you yeah. tweak the... You, I mean, with FSX right now, you could definitely tweak a lot of the files. There are many ways to make it look good on uh, on modern PCs for, for almost a 10-year-old game. Even yeah. like DirectX 10, which wasn't officially supported it was a preview back then there are plugins that allow you to fix the direct x10 issues that were rampant in fsx and mm -hmm. essentially looks a lot better than than running it on stuff you know on dx9 and yes there has been like you know folks 
streaming on Twitch for you know for FSX, but until I get a new video card that allows me to stream through through Nvidia, yeah, I'm probably gonna yeah it'll be a while before I like do any live streaming of that. Fair enough. All right, my friend, I gotta let you go, but thank you for the FYI. Flight simulators, they're out there. Check them out. All right, yep. take care, my friend. Have a good one. You too. Bye. And uh, congrats on hitting 30, even though you've been listening to this show since you were 19, <laughs> which means I'm also that old. <laughs> All right. Rob. What, what? Deal with it. <laughs> no, actually, you know, and like I told Zaku, actually, my 30s have been pretty fucking awesome. And considering the fact that I had, uh, you know, I was really, really sick when I was 29, it actually made me very thankful to turn 30. So, you know. All right, one eight seven seven game OLR. Username on Skype is Orange Lounge Radio. Now the phones are lighting up. They were slow earlier, but now it's they they just fill right up. Hi, you're on Orange Lounge Radio. Who's this? Uh, this is YYR. Aaron, hey. how are you? Hey, YYR, how you doing? Uh, well, I'm uh, I'm trying to formulate an idea for uh, this new game jam thing that we've all uh, laid out tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, it, you so far, little... the best idea I have. Um, going off Jason's phone call a little bit uh, ago, was uh, come up with a plan to develop a game in five weeks. Yeah. And don't test it. <laughs> and then release it. <laughs> so the game... I mean, it, it works for Ubisoft, right? That's right. <laughs> so the game, well, it's going to be meta. It's going to be a game about making a game. Uh, oh, well, <laughs> well, now we have another thing entirely. No, he's saying basically <laughs> oh, just to develop a game, oh, don't I test get it. it. Oh, I thought, okay, I thought that was his idea was to be in the game, you're going to make a game. Okay, never mind. I was I was going too meta with it. Oh. Okay, I get it. I wow, get it. you're really thinking about this. <laughs> I am, I am. Well, you know what? There's a part of me, not that I want to give away everything I'm doing, but I'm, I'm actually thinking of going with the very literal interpretation of the word and doing a game about bugs. Not gi not giving Loki the, uh, not giving Loki his Earth Defense Force game, but I don't see why you can't do a game about <laughs> bugs. Well, I mean, I'll admit, uh, you know, as soon as the theme was chosen, I turned to my uh, fiance sitting on the couch next to me and I said, "All right, let's do something with spiders." Ah. But uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to go with spiders. All right. Um, I just I, I would love to do something that was both figurative and literal. Yes. But uh, I, I also don't want to go beyond my means. Uh, you know, one person, three weeks, and uh, a keyboard. And, uh, I mean, basically, though, three weeks does sound like a lot, but I'll warn anybody. I mean, first of all, I want to super encourage everyone, as many people as possible, to get in on this. Mm -hmm. But I also want to warn people that... Game development really is a time sink. It will take longer than you would expect to do, well, pretty much anything. So don't wait for two and a half weeks and then say, all right, yeah, let's throw something to get. No. The way I start, figure it, it's always three times longer. So just <laughs> plan something for a week and it'll take you three weeks. Um, also, uh, one, yeah. big, one big reason we're starting it now is that we know a lot of people have time off for the holidays. Now, granted, a lot of you spend time yes. with family, but there's also a lot of you that have a lot of free time right now. So we really want to start it before the holidays and then run it really all the way through the holiday period. So, Yeah, this is probably the best time of year to do it, I think. I mean, any time's a great time to develop a game, but this is probably uh, as good as we could do as far as uh, time for yeah. everyone. But yes, absolutely, as many of you guys listening as possible, whether you're listening live on the podcast, anything, go ahead and make something because uh, you're going to enjoy it. I think you will. Uh, and, and some folks in chat saying, um, let's see, uh, they're, they're talking about the meaning of the word bugs. And Dark Tattoo says, so you can do a game about bugs. That I think I can work with. It's you it, however do, you interpret the rule. You can do a buggy theme. game. Anything you want around that theme of buggy game. Don't. How do you interpret that? Because I don't know. Maybe you want to do a game about Amish people and have it be about a horse and buggy. You could do it. <laughs> you know, SSJ100 Matt did bring that up earlier in chat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amish Amish Racer 2000. Why not? Come on. You could do a game with horses and buggies. Why not? Oh, look. I just gave somebody a concept right there. All right. Uh, now I got to think of something new. Perfect. All right. <laughs> All right well, YYR, I am so I, excited. I think we're to done here. I am so excited to see what you come up with. All right. I'm sorry. Broken up a little bit. I, what happened? I just wanted to say I am so excited to see what you come up with. Oh, yeah, well, I'm excited, too, because I'll tell you, at this point, my slate is blank. I really have no idea. I'm with so, you. So um, you have just as much of an idea as I do. All right. <laughs> well, I've got, I've got to think, too. I will too. come up with something. 
Me too. I think I know how I'm going to do it. I just need to know like what story I'm going to tell. So we'll see. Mm. All right. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be putting some serious thought into this over the next day or two. All right. Good luck, my friend. Take care. I'm very excited. And I am looking forward to what everyone else puts out as well. So, yeah, pick up your keyboards and or game controllers or whatever you're using and get cracking. This is going to be great. Do it. Create something, damn it. Yep. All right. Take care, my friend. Enjoy your weekend, your holidays, and uh, everything else. You too. (laughs) Take care. Remember, do the thing. I know I'm going to enjoy the rest of those latkes that are sitting over there waiting for me to eat. I'm so excited. All right. Oh, man, you filled me so – like even Alan messaged me earlier. Do I even need to make dinner tonight or have you pretty much filled up on crap? And I'm like, I filled up on crap, but it was really good crap. (laughs) I'm taking some of the cookies with me unless Becky has some when I get to our house. All right. Well, um, I do want to uh, thank everybody who called in tonight. If you did not call in uh, and you were trying to get in and you didn't get through, I'm very sorry, but you will just need to uh, send us an email, participate at orangelaunchradio.com, or you can send us a tweet or what have you. But really, this week, guys, it's time to get working on your games. Create something, damn it, in the first VOG Game Jam. Your forum is apparently already up, Loki. Uh, so for people to discuss. Yeah, I, I posted even there's some tools that I found on one of these like Game Jam Tips sites. So I just copy and pasted that. Awesome. Awesome. I'm really going to try to spend time to do this. I'm, like, just, I've I'm the type that will procrastinate. I'm with an idea f- f- quick because yeah. I can, that could take a while. So. It could. It could. All right. Well, that is uh, about going to do it. Uh, Loki, checking in with you for any last minute stories. No, I don't have anything. All right. <laughs> All right, well, then that uh, brings us to the end of the show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for supporting Independent Radio. Um, all we ask, you know, tell a friend or two about the show. You know, we don't have this big budget. We're not, we, I, I, we're not IGN. We can't put a big video out there that everybody sees of our buggy Tetris experience. We can only tell you about it. So please uh, tell a friend or five about the show and help spread the word about independent broadcasting. And most of all, support independent broadcasting. There's so many hardworking people out there creating amazing content. Okay, not I, just, I was going to mention this real quick. Oh, just because it's, right, sorry. As soon as, I, as I'm in my outro, a buggy podcast. No, sorry. They, it's kind of cool. There is a British company, apparently uh, Liberty Games, that made a a pinball table that's an internet meme pinball table. It has a bunch of internet memes in there. Oh, that's awesome! And it looks pretty sweet, like Grumpy it, Cat. It's a, it's a real yeah, Grumpy Cat, Fry, you know, it's all all awesome. that stuff. Yeah. Oh, I want to play that. That sounds awesome. Oh, that could have been the theme: internet memes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that would have been. Oh well. Kind of Next cool. time, the sequel, the sequel. You guys, you guys have to make this first game jam so awesome that we do another one. All right, it's time to go around and get everybody's final thought. Again, a big happy holidays to all you guys out there listening, uh, out there in podcast land, and uh, thanks for spending some time with us during the week. And um, please consider leaving a nice review for the show, a five star review on iTunes or a five star review on Stitcher Radio or wherever you found this show goes an awful long way. Thank you so much, uh, Dar Soccer. Your final thought tonight. Uh, no, no. <laughs> All right, Loki. Your final thought tonight. I gotta get working on my game, I guess. All right, Quickly. get cracking, get cracking. And my final thought tonight is create something. Damn it! I can't wait to see what you all put together. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Happy gaming. Good night. You've been listening to Orange Lounge Radio. Orange Lounge Radio is a production of OLR Studios. To join us for a live show, tune in to VOGNetwork.com Sunday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. The views and opinions expressed in this program do not necessarily reflect those of the staff of Orange Lounge Radio or VOG Network, but you know they were all still true. See you next week. <laughs>